Nearly. Oh, look at that. That was for Andy, that was. It was almost, almost did it. Hey, everyone. <laughs> no one will get that. Hey, everyone. It's Fox from Model Making Guru here. Hello, hello. Welcome, welcome, welcome. It is Warhammer Sunday. Yes. I'm still knackered from yesterday. Good God, that was a long stretch. Don't know how long I'll last today. My voice is going and I've got a banging headache, but we'll do our best. We'll do our best. Welcome, welcome. It is Warhammer Sunday, my traditional weekly um, bit of working at the bench, working on my Warhammer army, the unending forces, steady, the unending forces of the holy contrivance. It is my Warhammer 40k Imperial slash Mobile Suit Gundam Principality of Zeon themed army. Yes, uh, and I've been spending many, 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 many months building my army up slowly. I've still not got to the point where I've actually got enough of any particular units that I've got the codex for to go and play on the table because I'm a spoon and I keep making things I don't have the codex for. So I haven't yet played a game. I will do one day. I will do. Get to my local store and get game going. But I'm slowly building up my army. Uh, we've got so far, we've got a knight. We've got some specimens. We've got some half-painted Tempesta Scions. We've got a Torox that's all painted up just about almost. Uh, and some bits and bobs. I've got a few unpainted models. So I'm slowly working it over. Uh, but yes, I, what I do is over a weekend, if I have the chance over the full weekend or just on the Sunday, I'll work on my Warhammer army. Because uh, this is technically, I still consider the weekend my days off. So I like to do my stuff on the weekend, although it's usually just on the Sunday. So I invite you to hang out with me for a few hours while I crack on with it. Now, like I say, I don't know how long I'll last today. If you missed out, I did do a six hour stream yesterday for the Gumplers. <clears throat> and my voice is a bit... <laughs> I feel like I could be working at the counter at McDonald's or something. Oh, it's not my counter. I have to get the manager. So I might go at any moment, and I say my head's a bit bangy today, but we'll we'll figure it out. Um, if you've not watched one of these before, hello and welcome. I'll just be working on my army, uh, hanging out with you guys in the chat. If you're watching this, uh, hopefully, by the way, just everybody let me know you can hear everything and see everything. That everything's working okay. My streaming software is being a bit weird this morning, so it's weird anyway. But to make sure everything's all right. Um, yes, uh, what was I saying? Yes, I'm going to hang out with you guys in chat. If you're watching this and you can see the live chat here, that's just the historical chat. If you want the typey typey chat, then make sure to click on the little YouTube icon that's down here somewhere. Little YouTube iconium. Click on that and it'll take you to the YouTube page. That fell off. Shut up. Don't be falling when I'm talking. Daddy's on telly. Behave yourself now. <sighs> yes, click on the YouTube icon. I don't know where that came from. Click on the YouTube icon down here and that will take you to the YouTube page where you can join in the live chat. And you want to because I'll be giving away some stickers and things later on. Um... As always, I depend on the chat and the folks in chat to give me stuff to talk about. So if you want to get my attention, my iPad's over there with the chat on it. So, as always, put your questions and comments that you want me to see in chat in big fat capital letters if you want me to have a chance of seeing them. I will miss a lot, though. Um, so if you want to, you can do a super chat. It's the little dollar symbol at the bottom of the chat window. That will allow your comment to be in a big coloured box and it'll make a little ping noise and there'll be a thing animated on screen and I can't have a chance to miss it then. I definitely will see your comment. Uh, you can, of course, um, drop me an email if you want to, if you don't have access to chat at all. And that's just my email address here, fox at modelmakingguru.com. I've actually had people say, what's your email address? It's there on screen all the time, forever, permanently. <laughs> yes. <clears throat> so fox at modelmakingguru.com if you want to ask me a question. Now, I do have three questions for this afternoon's sticker giveaways. Thanks to Scott in Orkney. Thank you, Scott. So, uh, but send me questions and answers anyway. If I use your questions and answers for sticker giveaways next week or any other time, I'll send you a sticker. Uh, as always, don't forget, of course, yes, Stream Boss Battle, still going. For those that you don't know, uh, previous Stream Boss Aviad Madar was kicked off his throne many, many weeks ago by our new Lord and Saviour, Kevin, or Simon Reynolds, as we like to call him, because um, I screwed it up and I got it all wrong and it kept calling him Kevin. So it's not me, even though it says Model Making Guru, it's Sai, who is the current Stream Boss. Uh, got a little bit of health gone. If you've not seen this before, the way Stream Boss works is the person that gets him down to zero health becomes the new Stream Boss and wins three to five hundred quids worth of Warhammer kits or Forge World kits of their choice or products or whatever you want from GW or Forge World of their choice. What you do is to get his health down. If you're not a subscriber to this channel already, subscribe and hit the notification bell. That'll take a tiny bit of Kevin's health off. Uh, you can do a super chat. Every time someone does a super chat, 
Uh, that will take some of his health off, the little dollar symbol under the chat. Or you can do a tip to the tip jar, which is streamlabs.com forward slash model making guru. Every time you put a tip through, that will again take some of his health off. Now, the more you put through as a tip or the more you put through as a super chat, the bigger the amount, the more of his health it takes off. And that's how Sai won last month. He put a 270 quid tip in and he got 500 quid worth of stuff. <laughs> yeah, it's, that's how it works. So we've not got much of his health off yet. He's still a new king. Nobody's unseated him yet. So get your tips and super chats and all that nonsense coming through. And eventually, one of you can become stream boss. All the money raised through the tips and the super chat doesn't go in my pocket. It goes into the pot and you win the pot if you get him down to zero. Right, I'm going to have a swig of tea. And yes, I'm apologising. It's tea today, not coffee. Oh, Because I woke up this morning with a bangy head, so I made myself a litre of coffee. And funnily enough, that didn't seem to make any difference. I don't understand that. So, <clears throat> I've already had a big litre of coffee, so I'm going to have not a big litre of coffee again. I'll have some tea this time. Now, today, what are we going to be doing today? Well, it's going to be a bit different today because I've pretty much finished this now. Apart from the dude, uh, I've got to paint the dude and I've got to paint the spotlight. But I'm going to do them off camera because they're kind of... I don't really want to paint the dude on camera because I need to get close up with my helmet of seeing and my paintbrush and be like, oh, get my face right here. So I'll do that off camera. So what I've got today, I've actually matte varnished this now. You can see the camera is coming along quite nicely. It's been matte varnished. We've got all the dust and dirt. It's not quite as muddy as I was going to go for, but I'm fine. I've not really weathered underneath much because you're never going to see that. I don't really care. That's going to be on the tabletop like that. Uh, I have given it a coat of matte varnish to lock everything in. And of course, what that's done is that has dulled down all the metallics. So what I need to do really today very quickly is just go back and do a little bit of dry brushing and maybe some little edge highlighty bits here just to bring back some ping and twinge to the metallics just to make them pop a little bit. But other than that, we're pretty much done. This is my Imperial Xeon Chimera. Yes. And I never did paint the little bits of scroll work on there, but it doesn't matter because they're covered in dust. So that's pretty much done. So we'll be doing that. Once I've done that, because I don't think that's going to fill three hours, I'm going to take a break from the norm. Uh, I, th I thought to myself, I need to build something. Once I've finished this, there's not a lot to do. I need something to do for the remaining like two hours, 40 minutes. So what I've got, uh, I thought I'd just whip out a different kit and start on that. Uh, now, it's not part of my army. I know this is Warhammer Sunday and it's got the Xeon symbol on the thing and it's all about me building my armor, but we're not going to do that. I'm going to start on my Rooker Truck Squig Buggy. Yes, I got this a while ago because I've wanted some of these vehicles for a while and I've been trying to figure out when I'm going to build this and it's going to be like later in the year, but I suddenly thought, well, if I run out of this today, I don't want to start on something else because I've got some other Imperial stuff to build or paint but I'll start on that another show I may as well start assembling this because what I need to start doing I've got boxes of kits lying around this this whole room is getting filled with boxes of unbuilt kits so especially for the Warhammer stuff because you can build these into mostly like one or two sub assemblies I'm going to start getting stuff built and primed and in the display cabinet just ready so it can be painted later on in the year but I've not got a box sitting around I've got a primed ready model that's just waiting for paint so I've got a couple of I've got a Lehman Russ and me Sentinel and some other bits and bobs my Hydra primed and ready for paint so they'll be cracking on so I might get I might start on that today just so it's it's getting it done and it's getting it out of the way because like I say if I can get as many of my Warhammer models built and ready in the cupboard for paint it's just less models taking up space now i'm going to have a quick look at the chat and then we'll crack on so let's have a look uh do have to say welcome first of all welcome back to andy mcleish who's back in the chat today not seen him for a while it's a lot of chat i've got to scroll down um so welcome back andy Boink! there you go um first uh, first in the chat was me but there's no historical record of that because the chat goes away after three hours so first in chat was pascal of course it was pascal of course it was Pascal. Now, I'm going to do a thing today. Somebody mentioned in chat uh, about being last in chat. What I'm going to do today, because I don't know how long chat lasts after the stream. What I'm going to do today is I'm going to send a sticker to the last person in chat at the end of the day. And what that means is when the stream's finished, I'm going to sit and wait. Well, I won't sit and wait because I've got to go and get some shopping. But I'll come back and I'll see who the who makes the last comment in the chat. And that person will win a sticker. So I'll, I'll let you know next week. So what I want to see at the end of the show is the show's finished. And you guys are all still in chat going, me, 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 me. Fighting over who's put the last comment. I want to see who gets the last word. So we'll see if it times out or if it goes on. I want you to probably still be here next week or doing little comments. But I want to see. So we'll, I'll give a sticker away to the last person in chat. And I'll stop banging the desk because I know that's quite loud on the microphone. Uh, we have uh, Ghost Lyle was in. Welcome, Ghost Lyle. Pineapple. Uh, William Rayburn. Good morning. Time for biscuits and coffee. Good man. Uh, Chris at Gross Models was in. 
Uh, welcome, Christoph, one of your mods for today. Dad is in as well. Dad's one of your mods. Uh, Chris and Dad are awesome, so be nice to them and they won't kick your ass. Trust me, you don't want to get your ass kicked by Dad. It's uh, scary. Uh, the Print Guru is in. Welcome, Print Guru. Uh, he says, Afternoon all, while we we'll wait, and if you're a Game of Thrones fan, check this out. It's brilliant. And then there's nothing there. If you're trying to post links, you can't post links in chat. Only mods can do that. So I do apologise if you're trying to post a link to something. Uh, Nimson Durin is in. She, she says, And here I thought I was going to be able to take a nap. Well, that failed. If only I did this every week at the same time, you'd be prepared. But there you go. <laughs> Just joking. Uh, Sergeant Bones is in. I know where he is. He's right there in the chat. He says, That sounds familiar, Fox. But I don't know what he's talking to. Candy Grand for Mongo is in. I am now last, but this might change. It did, because then following him was Sprumunga. G'day, Sprumunga. He said, hi, Fox and all. Probably can't stay long. Early morning tomorrow, but I saw the stream fire up, and I thought I'd say, g'day. I don't know why I'm doing my kind of wildlife television presenter voice when I do that. G'day. My name's Bob Cooper. I just, that's my, I call it my Bob Cooper voice, because he's like, yep, she's right, mate. <sighs> Probably on a farm with sheep or something, or I don't know. Anyways, moving on. Mad Mac 392 is in. Good day, all. Uh, we have... Who else is in? Big Goof is in. Welcome back, Big Goof. You were in yesterday in the uh, in the, uh, the the Gumpler streams. I bet you're watching this going, What's this now? This isn't this isn't Gumpler. Yes, I do my Warhammers on Sunday. Uh, let's have a look. Who else have we got? Let's have a look. Mickey Elliott. Good afternoon, all. Welcome, Mickey. Uh, Michael Strawman. Storman, I should say. Not Strawman. I mispronounced that. Michael... Is it Storman? Tell me how that's pronounced. Is it Stalman or Storman? Michael Storman, good afternoon, welcome. Uh, we have who else has come in? Andy McLeish, I said, yeah, he's come in. Lovely, lovely into zone eighty-eight. Good eye. Got another Antipodean in the chat. Good eye, bro. Uh, or I got you completely wrong because you're not in Australia. I've just... You have to remember, if you've never watched me before, if you're not familiar with me, I will get your names and locations completely wrong because I do have the worst memory in the world. I have the world's worst memory for any like names and places and stuff. So, you know, just don't don't expect me to remember anything. It's not don't be insulted if I get something wrong about you because it's, it's, I'm just rubbish. I'm just rubbish. That's why I always call people dude, because most times I can't remember people's names. Uh, George Gabriel's in. It's so early. Why am I awake again? Says George. Just never sleep, George. Never sleep. Welcome back. Uh, who else have we got since we started? Uh, Cy Reynolds, of course, comes in. He says he's just found out that next weekend, which is Warhammer Fest. Here's some information for you. Uh, the Golden Demon thing is when they are going to announce the new paint products and the new the sort of paint range. Now, here's some news for you. Um, if you've not seen the trailers, and they're really, really good trailers... They've got something new coming out. They, nobody really knows for sure what it is, although there's been a few leaks suggesting it's some kind of new all-in-one paint, but there's no confirmed things. There's some. They've done some little teaser videos, and it seems like they're going to be releasing some new paint products, a part of a new paint range. Now, some people think it might be like airbrush products, you know, like an actual airbrush. Maybe they've teamed with the water or someone. Some people think it's going to be new different ranges of paints. Maybe you're going to get dropper bottles. For, oh, God, that'd be great. Dropper bottle paint. Yes, that would be fantastic. But nobody really knows. There is a there is a potential leak that it's going to be a new paint that both bases that sort of colours your model and shades it at the same time. It's potential. I don't know how they do that, but it's interesting. But nobody really knows. But it's going to be revealed uh, next week at Warhammer Fest, which is also when they're doing the Golden Demon thing. Uh, and as as you might not know, Cy Reynolds, our current Lord and Savior, Stream Boss, is a Golden Demon winner. Yeah. So yeah. I don't know what he's learning from me. He's a Golden Demon winner. I'm just some schmuck that paints stuff. <laughs> I don't know. So, yes, yeah, so, uh, Simon, uh, if you are, you're taking part next week, so good luck for next week. We expect you to come back with all the Golden Demons. Yes. And then what you can do is, when you get your Golden Demon, take a mould of it and cast it in something and then send one to me and I can pretend I've got a Golden Demon. <laughs> no, I'm only joking. Right, so anyway, yeah, so, so yes, next week we should have a, a bead on what this new paint product is. I can't wait to find out. I'd love it to be something really, really awesome. I mean, if it is a new paint and shade at the same time, because the first advert was the 50 shelves of grey, and it was like, you should sort out all these unpainted models on your shelf, how to get them all cleared. So everybody thought it was like some new painting products that make painting easier for beginners, because people want to get them painted. So there is some potential substance to this all in one paint. So it will be interesting. You paint it, you get a base colour and it's the shade at the same time it shades in the recesses. So we shall wait and see. I hope it's more than that. 
I hope it is like some kind of airbrush setup. That would be quite good. That would be rather good. But they need to have copper bottles. Don't don't put airbrush paints in pots. It's stupid. Stupid, stupid. I did do the Games Workshop feedback thing the other week. Yeah, and I said a lot of things about dropper bottles and airbrush paints and things. Um, what else we got going on? Ah, Asai says, my aim, therefore, is to bring home a demon and hopefully new paint. Yes, do it all. Do it all. So you live, if I'm a brightly side, don't you live near Warhammer World anyway? And I hate you completely because I'm, I'm up in Manchester and I hate anybody that lives near Warhammer World. Because then again, I don't because I'd spend all the money. I'd be even poorer than I am. Um... Just a demon will do, Sai says, Dad. And Sai says, I hope so. I was cooking, drying out dirt this morning. The missus is not pleased. But cooking dirt smells so nice. So nice. Did she not appreciate the smell of the sort of almost baking bread smell? Oh, yes. Uh, who else have we got? Uh, let's have a look. Vasily's in. Welcome, Vasily. Uh, we have uh, the national anthem reminds me of being in high school and standing for the anthem. OK, you're Canadian, then not Australian. Fantastic. <laughs> I got that wrong, didn't I? Uh, Ray from Malta is in, Ray Aquilina, hi Sergeant Bones, my friend, hi Dad, my friend, welcome Ray, I don't know if you can see on camera, but you won't see it, but there's your uh, Malta patch is there on the side of my uh, organisational trays, just above, just, just there, you can't see it, I can't move the camera because it will break everything, but welcome Ray, uh, Wayne Haywood, after all, welcome Ray, uh, uh, Wayne even, get my teeth in, uh, Sam Reynolds says fail, Dad says I got it Fox, I got it too, Okay, yes, excellent. That's when I did the peep. Uh, Osric's in, Osric 9000, Snowman HFC is in. Welcome, welcome. Do you know, since I've started and talking to you guys, my headache's gone. You guys are brilliant. You guys cure everything. Who needs homeopathy when you can have you guys? <laughs> no, I'm a skeptic. Trust me, I'm, I'm joking. Uh, let's have a look. Andy McLee says lozenge, lozenge. Get yourself some Hall's soothers. First class ticket to Nottingham, please. Uh, re-record, not fade away. Yes. Don't mistake halls for walls. Them's be sausages, says Sai. Ooh, sausages, yes. Uh, everybody's talking about Chris. Scott Sutherland, welcome, Scott. Welcome, welcome, welcome. I have your three questions. I will be using them. Vasily says, let's talk about Brexit. No, it's <laughs> no politics, no religion, please. Uh, Dad says, no, let's not. Skullfish, Skullfish is in. Spid is in. Welcome, Spiddy. Uh, who else? It's all getting busy in the chat now. Uh, and once you become stream boss, says George, Fox Fox it up and removes your name. Yeah. And then your nickname becomes Kevin. Basically, Simon became stream boss. I tried to adjust a setting. It reset the whole thing and called him Kevin. And I've got no way to now make Simon the stream boss. So it had defaulted to me. But it is Simon. But we all now call him Kevin. And forever, he will now be called Kevin. Si, you have to go to the solicitors, mate, and get a deep hold them. Uh, dang it, I forgot the coffee, says William Rayborn. That's Sort, sort it out. Frankie's in. Frankie goes Tobbywood. Hello and good afternoon, guys. I hope you're all doing well. Welcome, Frankie. Good abend. Welcome to the show. Uh, I thought McNichols in. Hello, Foxy Afternoon. Welcome, dude. Uh, chat just jumped. Wow. Uh, let's have a look. Do, 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 do. Right, my chat has just jumped. I've got to catch up now. Oh, it's moved. <laughs> Uh, Pascal will be the last in because he is the internet like the lawnmower man he'll confirm it by making all the stream guys phones ring simultaneously in 5 4 3 2 1 <laughs> if my phone rang then I'd, I'd actually be a little bit of poop <laughs> yes uh, for those who weren't here right at the start I'm going to do a thing today where I will give a sticker to the last person in chat whoever gets the last comment before chat times out will get a sticker so I expect you all to fight after I've gone uh, Richard Campion's in, uh, Champion even, Richard Champion, it's because I used to know someone called Richard Campion. Welcome Richard. Uh, let's have a look. Uh, Interzone says, like Hex Wraith Flame, but other colours. Yes, that's one of the, I was watching um, Kyrgios' video where he was looking at, was it Kyrgios? He's had like Hex Wraith Flame and the other one, um, I can't remember what it's called now, which are sort of like that, where they kind of colour it, but they're, they're like thick shades. They colour it a lot more than a shade, but they also go darker in the recesses. So it could be a range like that, where for the new paint, where if you've got a thing, you want to paint a thing red. You could, if you could use shades, you could build it up with shades, but it would have to do a lot of layers to get the, the not 
recessed parts red. Whereas if it's maybe just a very thick shade, you sp slap it all over. The, the flat areas are now red, nice and red, because it's quite a dense pigment. But the recesses are darker because it's a shade. So maybe it's something like that. It could be. It could be. Uh, bit of a do. Uh, Athelman Nichol says, if that was the case, I could use a gallon of it to repaint my car after Skyline splattered mine and everyone else close to our building. Oh, yeah. Nothing worse than builders and stuff doing work and getting stuff on your car. Get into a detail of a polish it out. Uh, let's have a look. Uh, you remember wrong, says Cy Reynolds. I live in Essex. Oh, I do, geezer. Ooh, I... There you go. Nothing wrong with that, mate. Yeah, but you're still they're probably nearer to Warhammer World than I am. But travel regularly to Warhammer World, yes. Uh, three hours. Oh, he says three hours to Warhammer World. There you go. But he sends a day each week uh, in Derby for work. That's where Fox is confuddled. I, I'm, I, I just, I wake up and I'm confused. I get lost getting out of bed. Uh, see, I told you guys, Foxy and food as usual. Yes. Uh, do do uh, Belly and bench time. Yes. Okay. Go on then. Dad's asked the question: What's in your belly? What's on your bench? After ask that question every live stream I do. Uh, so what's in your belly, or what will be in your belly later on, and what's in your bench? Don't know what happened for my dinner yet. Not decided. Uh, Sam Reynolds says I've got a suspicion it'll be a range of new technical paints, but also a new range of something to add to the layer wash bases and dries. Feck knows. That's the thing. I mean, they are angling it as as get all those unpainted miniatures sorted out. So if you're going to paint things, if 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 it's angled at the people that are put off painting miniatures because they haven't got the time and they're thinking of how you can quickly get your stuff painted up, I don't know. Maybe that's where the airbrush thing came from, but I wouldn't say airbrush painting miniatures is any faster than brush painting because there's a lot of faffing around. Uh, Roger Woodward says hot dogs with mustard for the belly and empty bench. So you need to work on both of those. Uh, something just happened, but I don't know what it was. My screen, my big telly screen just flashed. Very strange. Don't know what happened there. Um, anyway. Sushi. Oh, snowman's got sushi and nothing. I have a headphone in each ear. One on the football. Okay. Football. I don't understand football. Curiosity, it could be even a dip. Army painter style, says Cy. Si. Yeah, it could be, but that's... I don't know if I want to do that dip see I'd, i quite like the army painter dips but i don't like that it takes 24 hours to dry nonsense yes time will tell <gasps> osric's having bolognese meatballs tonight and he's now building the apothecary oh yes bolognese and meatballs and all the foods yes i'm gonna be hungry until the end of the show i'm always hungry if you wonder why i'm always sound hungry during the show it's because i'm always thinking about food because i ask you about food and then i just, I'm, I'm, yeah man doesn't eat he will die so anyway let's do some work uh, Mickey Ellis got sausage casserole in the belly and some spes marines on the bench. <gasps> sausage casserole! Yeah. Uh, Cy Reynolds says, I wouldn't. It goes against the James Workshop style, to be honest. Yeah, I, I know what you mean. I don't... I've never been tempted to try a dip, a shade dip, because... I mean, more often than not, I, I'm not shading if something in one colour anyway. I'm using multiple shades in different parts, so... Yes, I don't know. Uh, why would people play Warhammer if you don't want to learn to paint, says Vasily. There are a lot of people that just have no model making skill at all, but they want to try the game out. So, you know, we're kind of, I don't know if we're in the minority, but there are people that don't really care about what the thing looks like. They just want to play the game, so. Belly is bacon, says Cy Reynolds. Bench is secret demon project. Shh, it's a Magnus the Red conversion. Oh, I just said that out loud. <laughs> Sorry. Uh, Frankie goes to Hollywood is having spicy soup from red lentils in my belly and more decals on my R5 Turbo Rally. That car looks mint. Uh, Candy Graham found some frozen scallops in the freezer, so after those tonight, I bought a Citadel painting handle last week, so I'll be painting some minis. These things are fantastic. I love, I've got like six of these. I love these. I just love them. They're great. They're so good. There are wooden things and nonsense available, but they don't do this. Because <laughs> what you can do is you can drill a hole in the bottom of your tank and stick it on there. Oh, yeah. Now, somebody needs to explain this to me before we get going. I um, I think I asked this last time, but... I Because I did... Uh, you know, as you all know, I've got a Patreon account. I did a survey for Patreon. They send creators a survey every few months. And you come in $100 as vouchers, Amazon vouchers. And I did the survey and I got a $100 voucher. 
them 80 quid. And I went on to Amazon. I thought, right, well, I've got these 80 quid vouchers. I can only use them on Amazon. I may as well pick up something, you know, get a kit to build or something. Um, so I thought, I'll get myself a Bane blade. They're about 85 quid. That's, that's I can do that. I thought, I'll get myself a Bane blade because it's a big-ass tank and I'm going to look forward to painting that. For some reason in the UK, there's two listings for Bane blades and they're both like several hundred pounds. Can someone explain this? Why are people, why are they like not on Amazon? There's lots of other things you can get, GW stuff on Amazon, but no Bane blades. And the two that are there are like two or three hundred quid because they're from like, I don't know, maybe they're from Japan or somewhere. But why why would somebody sell a Bane blade at hundreds of pounds? It's like 80 quid. I don't, I really didn't get that. Um, but anyway, I, I, after a while, I gave up. This is what I was going to show you. I gave up. Um, hang on. I gave up trying to get me Bane Blade. I thought, you know what, screw it. Let's just see what I've got in my budget. I've got 80 quid to spend. Uh, and I'm not going to use anything else on Amazon. So I got myself I got myself some Age of Sigma. I know it's not 40k. I know it's not 40k. But look at that puppy. Look at that. I had a choice between um, the Star Drake, um, Archeon the Ever Chosen, or the Lord of Change. Because I, I don't play Sigma. But some of the models and the beasts and things are fantastic. So I thought, I've got I've got a choice of those three. Lord of Change, I've got uh, Archeon, or I've got this that were tickling my fancy. But I couldn't decide, so I've got, I got Mama Fox. I said, Mama Fox, which one of these is the best? Which one should I get? They're all in my budget. And she was like, that one with the big puppy dog. And I'm like, brilliant, I'll have that one. So, so I've got myself that. I don't know how I'll get around to doing it at some point in the future, far distant future. But uh, yeah, that's going to be fun to paint. That obviously be a build series. I've got a, I've got a few um, Sigma kits. I've got that. I've got the um, one I can't remember the name of, and there's the other one I can't remember the name of that um, Dave and the gang sent me. The I, I don't know the Astra Nomen Common. I don't know what it is. They're all awesome anyway. So yes, I don't play Sigma, but Sigma as a game doesn't interest me at all because I want guns and bullets. I don't want swords and magic and nonsense. But hot damn if some of those kits don't look fantastic. Uh, Richard Jammy says, yeah, but it's not 40k. Uh, let's have a look. George Gabriel says, oh, uh, William Rayburn says, sausage and biscuits and coffee. German half track by Dragon. Cool. Uh, let's have a look. George Gabriel says, I need to find food. Dad says, belated happy birthday, Quano Man. Welcome to, uh, happy birthday, dude. Uh, Nim Cinderella says, Bench my shrouded leopard, belly Reese's crispy sticks. I'm still broke till Tuesday. Yeah, but at least you found some Reese's crispy sticks. <laughs> uh, did you find the whatever it was that was in the freezer? Uh, Ghost Lyle says, Dragon. Dragon. Cy si Reynolds says, that I just looked, that's odd as hell. They are defo the plastic version, so I, I too am confused. Yeah, they're just plastic. What, uh, um, what's the word I'm looking for? Big tank kits. I forgot. Oh, brain. Bane blade, that's it. Brain just stopped. Um, so they're just boxed down the plastic. And so one of them is actually a really old box. But it's like, why are they... Is it because they've only got, like, they've got none in stock and they want to just have them unbuyable, but they don't want to take them out of stock, maybe? So you can go and look at their other stuff. Is it just like a... They'll keep it as if it's in stock, but they know they won't sell it because they've got none, maybe, or something like that. I don't know. It's weird. But I don't know why nobody's got them. People sell all kinds of the kits. And some of them are actually quite good prices. Some of them are a bit over expensive. Some are cheaper than GW. But nobody has a Bane Blade. It's like, oh. Uh, Ghost Lyle says, this does not spark joy. I prefer the more Crusher kit when it comes to dragons, says Palmer Zero. See, it's not 40k, says Sai, but by God, it's gorgeous. That's why my stream boss price was mostly Age of Sigmar, gorgeous models. Uh, yeah, Sai bought himself a whole, because he won 499 quids worth of stuff, so he chose... A big load of um, Sigma stuff because they look fantastic. Uh, you skipped me bench. Oh, hang on. Yes, I did. I was actually going to do that one. Where's it gone? George says, I have the beginnings of my uh, Gundam Builders World Cup build on my bench. It's a few kits. Right now, it's a two times Master Grade Freedom 2.0, uh, a full metal Lupus Rex, full metal Grim. Uh, full metal? FM? What's FM? Remind me. FM Grim Gird. Uh, high grade Barbatos, two times an art, real grade Zaku, two, and some pla plate and tubes and stuff. Tubes is a good choice. Always do tubes. That sounds awesome. Uh, you need to make sure you keep us updated as to how you get on, especially with this Union Palava with Bluefin. Let's not go there in a Warhammer shot in a Warhammer show. But yes, oh Bluefin, you spoons. 
that does uh, that sounds pretty good uh, there, George. I'm looking forward to seeing how that comes out. Um, do 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 do. Roger Woodward has stepped up from the hot dogs with a roasted pepper and couscous salad. Ooh, yes. Full Mechanics, that's the one. I can't remember what it was like. Full Metal, that's not the one. I knew it was Full something. Full Mechanics, that's the one. Wow, nice one. They're like the bit more detailed 1-100 Reborn, aren't they? The, the, the 1-100 scale, but not Master Grade, but they've got more interior parts. Yeah, they're quite good, those. They've launched a whole new range of kits from Iron Blooded Orphans. Foxy non-productive Sunday, we want to see paint and glue, says Athol. Yes, I'm getting there, I'm getting there. If, you, if you've not watched one of these before, you know I do very little work. It's mostly just talk and waffle. Uh, I'm tempted to paint it Warhammer style with edge highlighting and stuff, says George Gabriel. Mm, could do, could do. But it's, game, it's GBWC, I don't know how much that's going to go. Right, anyway, let's do some uh, nonsense. Not a lot to do, like I said, it's been matte varnished. Um, there's still, I've got to paint the figure, but that'll be another time. I've got to paint the light and the little periscope lenses, like the little window there and stuff. Again, I'll do that off camera because it's fiddly small work. What I'll do quickly at the moment is just a little bit of metallics just to get the, the bling back. And then I'll call that one done and we'll get the, uh, we'll crack on with the squig buggy then. Just getting that built. So what I'm going to do first and foremost, I'm going to find <coughs> my... Uh, first of all, I'm going to try some Necron Compound, because lazy. Uh, just as a basis, people are sending me things. Who's sending me what? Sending me emails. Ooh, that's a, uh, questions from Spid. Thank you, dude. Right, so uh, first thing I'm going to do is some little very subtle dry brushings. Uh, so I want a very small dry brush. brush. I shall use an old base brush. An old base brush. Base brushes are actually quite good for dry brushing. Just don't use a new one because it, it, it'll be... Why am I shaking it? Why, why am I shaking that? It's just... Idiot. Yeah, they're really good for dry brushing small areas, but they won't last more than a minute. So don't actually use them again for anything else. So I'm just going to do a little bit of the Necron compound, which is a dry paint. So it's designed for dry brushing. I need my helmet on so I can see. Uh, what I'm going to do, I'm going to do two lots of two lots of metallics. First of all, I'm going to do like a basis colour. Um, you've got this dirty metallics and there's all the dirt and there's texture in there and you can see. Oh, let me zoom in. Hang on. Let me zoom in for you. It's not exactly great when you zoom in, but never mind. Uh, you, can, you might not see it there, but there's like, <clears throat> there's a texture and a grain to it. <coughs> So there's some bits that look metallic and some bit that look that look dirty and muddy. So I'm very gently picking out the edges, but also trying to get some little patches. Very, very subtle, because I've got most of it now. Most of the metallics, because they've been matte varnished, they're just like a, a, a metallic-y grey colour. And when I do metallics, I like to have two, two sort of layers, really. I like to have... Uh, especially when it's like worn metal like this, I like to have metallics that are not shiny because there's a layer of grime or dirt and dust on them. But then I also want to have little bits where they are shiny, little specular highlights. And that, to me, makes a metallic paint job look a bit more realistic. A worn and battered paint job look more realistic. So I want Bits where the, the, the metal is dirty and therefore matte and bits where the metal is rubbed clean through contact and friction and therefore a bit shiny. So, And it's not just talking about edge highlights here. Obviously, I'm going to pick out the edges, but I want areas where that's the case. Where, so I'm going to try and get a little bit very subtle here because this is mostly covered up by dirt and dust. So I'm going to put some little tiny touches of it. Just just a whisper, I'm putting no pressure on at all. And it's just a subtle whisper to suggest maybe it's been rubbed smooth. It's not been the paint's not chipped off on this bit, it's just rubbed smooth a little bit. Maybe a bit there. It's probably won't even come out on camera, but it's gonna be really super subtle. Just there we go. A bit more. 
<clears throat> but this is the way I like to do it. I like to get some metallics down, then matte varnish. If I'm doing a matte varnish, then matte varnish, and then go back and work on the metallics again. Oops, don't do that from the front really, don't not from the back. Where's the camera? There's the camera. Need to make sure you're seeing all this. Now the dozer blade itself is going to get a lot of wear and tear because it's obviously constantly in contact with crud and debris and dirt and bodies and all kinds of stuff. So that's going to get quite a bit worn. So I want this to just pick that out. Okay, so you kind of get the idea now. It's got a little bit of specular highlight back, but not much. I'm going to get a little bit on my weapons. But again, not much. Because you'll see when the next step is an even more aggressive highlight. So on the bolters, I want to just bring them back a little bit, but not too much. Are we on camera? Not too much. Very subtle. I've never been a believer in having like, you know, dirty, filthy vehicles and then nice shiny weapons. Because that's not how that's not how you know physics works and weathering works. So if this tank hasn't been washed in years. And it's been in a dirty, filthy, muddy environment. Everything's going to be covered in dirt and filth. Now, I know they keep weapons clean. But this is Warhammer, not real life. So we'll get some dry brushing on the little thruster bell on the missile there. Just a little bit. Now, I've kept the missile clean-ish because that's kind of would be used once and then replaced. So, Okay. Do, 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 do. Uh, a little bit on these weapons. Are we on camera? Yes. Now, I don't want to do too much of this Necron compound because I don't want this to be the overall colour of the metals. So it's more like a very subtle highlight. Subtle as I can. It's a very nice colour, this Necron compound. And because I'm doing this <clears throat> over a matte varnish, oh, excuse me, <coughs> my apologies, as I say, my voice is giving out today, so. Uh, because I'm doing this over a matte varnish, it does have a slight texture to it, which is rather nice. Uh, now, next we've got big heavy stubber on here and I want to be careful here because I don't want to make this too bright now I put blue shade on this and everything I used to gave it a kind of blue steel look very carefully so I don't want to go too buck wild on the uh, on the heavy stubber so I just want to really keep it minimal a little bit there just on that little muzzle brake area Trying to keep this light and airy if I can. It's very delicate, this. Just a very light, subtle dry brush. No pressure. I'm not putting any pressure on. I'm using the weight of the brush just by itself. Now, for this big, I keep wanting to call it a 50 cal. For this big, heavy stubber, I'm actually going to probably leave it like that. The shine of the Necron compound is about as shiny as I want to go because I want it to look like to have a slight blued steel look to it but not fully blued steel but so it just needs a very subtle hint of shine and that's probably about as shiny as I want to get it so that's brilliant that's perfect that's how I want to keep that one uh, and then I need to do a little bit on the tracks a little bit on these handles because they were originally silver I'll build up a little bit around these little doors here where there was some metallic exposure before. I keep going to shake it. I don't need to shake it. Shaking not required for a dry paint fox. Simpleton. Uh, a bit more on there. I'm almost stippling this on now for these bits here. This is where paint's rubbed away. Now because, because I've got... I do apologise, I've got the sniffles. Because I've got the, the original metallic paint underneath there, and that's now been matte varnished, that's just a grey colour. Now I'm putting over this metallic paint, 
you've now got that specular highlight between the stuff I've just put on which is a bit shiny the stuff underneath it which is now matte and then the paint of the vehicle so it just gives you this more fade from paint to bare metal I just how I like to vary I like to keep things varied a little bit and I find dry brushing is a nice way just to just to really get that kind of worn but not chipped look. You know, just worn away. Paint's worn away on the edges, but it's not it's not chipped. It's not been scraped off by anything, but it's just slowly worn away. Uh, we'll do a little bit on here. So these are supposed to be metallic anyway, so we'll give them a good old dry brush. These are like piston things. I will zoom out again in a minute. The only problem with any kind of digital webcam and stuff, when you zoom in, quality goes down the toilet. But I can't get the camera up close for you because then you wouldn't see anything because all you see is my head. I wouldn't be able to get the brush in anywhere, so yeah. So I can dry brush the Necron over these little pistony things and it's just enough to give it a bit of a metallic kick so it looks different from the, the housing that it's in. I can put a bit of, a bit of it around the edge of this door, down that hinge, hinge, hinge. Because there's really not much left. Let's get some more on that. Anyway, how are you all? While I'm doing this, how is everyone? I hope you're all well. Rested after yesterday. It was good fun yesterday. It was a good six hour stint that was. Now this thing appears to be like a handle that moves like that. So I'm going to try and create a sort of curve. It's probably not going to work. But a sort of curve just to suggest. I'll get the paint off on the on the handle itself. There we go. Little curvy shape, and I'll do some more to it in a minute. But little curvy shape is just that handle moves around like that. You see, I could do some there, but it's a bit small for that. So I want. I'll just put some on the edge. We'll put. I'll take. I don't want to take too much on the bottom because that's covered in mud. But I'll put some on the rivets. When you're doing like metallic -y bits like this. It's tempting to put it on every single edge, but where you've also got mud and dirt, you're not going to get the metallic necessary showing through all the time. So you can do things like put it on the rivets, and it just helps suggest that maybe the mud's come off that top of that rivet where there's no paint, but you've still got mud and dirt covering the flat bit. So don't go too overboard on it. Keep in mind the other weathering you've already done. Right, so... Next up, we're just going to do... I'll zoom out a little bit. I just need to blow my nose. One second. That's better. Uh, I'll zoom out a little bit because it's probably a bit too far in. There we go. Uh, okay, so now I need to do tracks. Now on tracks, I'm going to keep it again very subtle. I just want to really pick out some edges on this. Remember, of course, the tracks are going to be covered in mud and dirt, so I don't want massive amounts of metallic on these. You might think, well, they're in contact with the ground all the time, and they're going to have all the all the bits where they rub against the surface will be nice and bright and shiny. And that's true, but they're also going to be covered in dust and dirt. And again, you don't want lots of dust and dirt, but then, conveniently, no dust and dirt where there's a metallic bit. It would cover up a lot of the exposed metal. So I want a hint of it to tell you it's a metal track, but I don't want to go crazy because otherwise it just kind of negates the point of trying to reproduce the dust and dirt. So what I'm trying to suggest here is that the tracks are covered in mud and dirt, maybe dried on, but where there is massive contact with the ground, that's been rubbed off and you've got little hints of metallic. So I'm not painting the whole track silver, I'm just picking out the edges. I'm not bothering about under here because this is going to be tabletop played, so I don't really care about down here. It's not. It's never going to be seen, so I'm not interested in that. And there is, just so you know, there's nothing wrong with that at all. You don't have to paint every single thing. I'm a fond believer when it comes to the Warhammer stuff in the in the mantra of if you can't see it, there's no point in painting it. Like when you're painting figures and you've got maybe the rifle covers up the Aquila on the chest. Don't worry about painting the Aquila then because you're never going to see it. If you can't see it from two or three feet away, don't lose sleep over it. Now we're going to pick out some edges here. Now again, I'm not going to do a lot down here because this is covered in fresh mud and dirt. So there's no point me putting lots of metallic edge highlights on these parts because they're hidden by the dust and dirt. But I will do some on the edges here. 
Uh, maybe pick out some of these rivets and a little bit here and there, but not too much. Again, I don't want to do excessively. Maybe a bit on the skull, just a tiny bit on the skull. I'll put a little patch here where there's a where there's a handle on this hatch. Just a hint, I'll do a little circle so it makes a blended shape. Just a hint, hint on that side as well. Because you can have people opening and closing this hatch with that handle, so just a little hint there. Get around this edge. A bit on there maybe. And that's probably about all I need to do. I don't want a lot. Because all the areas of high traffic where there's dust and dirt, they're going to be covered up by dust and dirt. So you're not going to get a lot of visible exposed metal. In my mind, anyway, in my head cannon, my mind. Do a little bit on there, maybe just at the very front. Just to suggest. Uh, I think that will do one little bit on the hatch on the cupola. The cupola. What's the pronunciation? It cupola, cupola, or cupola? I never quite know. A uh, little bit there on that handle. Just to suggest it's something that people touch and hold regularly. We'll do a bit round the edge of the hatch. Round the edge, and then I'll get some on this aerial. Because this aerial is supposed to be shiny, so it's an aerial. It's not going to get massively weathered, other than grime. So we'll get a bit on that aerial. Doodle -doo -doodle -doo -doodle -doo -doo. Also makes it stand out from the rubber housing at the bottom of the aerial, which kind of ended up being the same colour. Put a little bit on there as well, on that one. So you can do dry brushing small areas. You're not restricted to big areas. If you use a small brush and you go carefully, you can get a lot of stuff done with dry brushing. Now there are people that you know thumb their nose at dry brushing. Like, oh, I'm going to do dry brushing. Lazy, amateur. I hold no truck with that at all. I, I would never, never. tell someone their model was terrible because they used a technique that professionals don't use and I've heard this said I've heard you know I've heard people say well it's nice but you know a proper painter wouldn't use dry brushing like that and you know what all I'd want to do is slap them because because no that's just being a snob there's no when you're painting a model there's no true right and wrong the only the only thing you need to think about is what it looks like at the end what is the end result? If whatever method you use works and it looks great, then I don't care how you've done it. And I would never say to you, you've done that the wrong way because that would just, you know, that's just a toolish thing to do. So, you know, a lot of people do thumb the nose at dry brushing, but I don't mind dry brushing. Dry brushing gave me all the, all the shading on the bottom there. That was all dry brushing. If you watch the earlier episodes, that's all dry brushing. If you do it right, it can look fantastic. You can look almost as good as airbrushing. Right, so that's that bit. I'm going to have a quick look at the chat and we'll do the last little bit. What's chat done? I've not been looking for a while. Uh, Nimsundarin says, yes, she ate it and it was good. I've forgotten what it was, but it sounded nice. Um, fuck, uh, where are we? I'm tempted to paint it Warhammer. I've done that one. Not a Warhammer model myself, says Roger Woodward. Mainly aircraft, but I'm looking to try one for a change of scenery soon. I'll give it a go. It's good fun. I mean, at the end of the day, I'm one of those people that I'll watch any kind of modelling content because whatever I do on this is equally applicable to, say, Gumpler. And whatever I do on a Gumpler is equally applicable to World War II armour. And whatever I do on World War II armour, you could apply to sci-fi spaceships. It doesn't really... I always say with my videos, it doesn't really matter what I'm building. I'm, I'm not a one-trick pony. I do do, you know, Warhammer. I do this. I've got other things that I've got to do. But I tend to, to keep this fresh. And I was saying this yesterday, to keep things fresh, because I do this for a living, to keep things fresh. If I just made what I think you want to see, I'd die of boredom because I'd be making not necessarily things I want to make. And I don't want my hobby that I'm my passion, that's also my income, to become boring. So I will jump from tree to tree. I'll go where the interest takes me. And it's not that I'm saying I'll make what I want and everybody be damned. It's me saying I'll make what I want because I have to, otherwise I'll get bored and I'll just have to go and get a job because I can't do this anymore. And it'll sell me on the whole thing. When, it, when you make your passion your living, you have to allow yourself the freedom to jump around and change things and keep it interesting. So, But all the techniques I use on anything, 
to all applicable to anything. It's, I don't care if I'm watching a video. I don't care what the what the model is really. It doesn't really matter if it's a this or a Gundam or a spaceship. Or it doesn't really matter. It's more just the, the, the methods and techniques. They're all equally applicable. Uh, let's have a look. Tribal module. They're great to build and paint, says Dad. I've I've learnt to brush paint by my last year with Warhammer. I had no experience of brush painting at all, and I'm learning to paint because these are so good. The Warhammer kits are so perfectly designed for brush painting more than any other kit that's why I've, I've loved them so much i've learned how to brush paint in a year and i'm not saying i'm good i'm just i'm just some bloke but i couldn't have done this a year ago before i started doing warhammer uh, do, 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 do. <laughs> vastly says not alone roger because he doesn't do warhammer i know they're speaking english but i don't understand anything it's like listening to a scientologist well no because i'm not talking rubbish but you know hey <laughs> it's a little bit of politics. I'll, I'll let that one pass. Um, uh, Nimsinderian says, I so I bought a wave hanger kit and I'm waiting for it to come via snail mail and was wondering if anyone has any tips on how to build walkways and catwalks that will be in a hanger bay with pla plate. Um, depends what the scale is, I suppose. Um, you just really want pla plate strips and very, very fine... Um, pla plate rods for your grips and rails depending on the scale if it's really tiny then yeah that's the kind of thing where you can get them third party photo etch parts for things like that um, depends on the scale I mean it might be worth it might be worth looking into uh, if you're doing like say it's 1 100th scale for example uh, or 1 144th it might be worth having a look at um, some of the photo etch parts you get for boats and battleships and World War II ships because they have a lot of photo etch kits where it's things like railings and handrails and ladders. Now, they're not going to be in the right scale, um, but they might just about fit. You're kind of cobbling stuff together. So if you combine like plastic strips for your walkways uh, with, you know, you can make little bracing joints out of plastic plate and stuff, but then use little photo etch, say, handrail parts. It might be worth looking into that. There will be somewhere. I would suspect um, a third party photo etch set of railings and handrails for, say, battleships or something like that. It looks about the right size. Uh, -ba 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 uh, uh, Nim says, if you. Roger says, Vasily, YouTube has been a great educator for me. My skills have improved from watching Build Like Foxes Space 1999 Eagle. Thank you very much. That's like I say, though, all my techniques, you can use anything. I, I don't really try and focus on one specific type of model and say, this is what you have to do for Warhammer, or this is what you need to do on Gumpler. I'll use all techniques on everything. Uh, Nim says, if you have a link, I posted something about it in the Boom Hut, and then Dad's posted a link to the Boom Hut. If you've not seen it before, I run the Model Makers Boom Hut on Facebook. It's a completely friendly, supportive group. There's about 3,500, 4,000 members now. Uh, you can go in there, post up pictures of your stuff, hang out, make lots of friends. It's designed to be friendly. There's no snark. There's no bitchiness. There's no nasty criticism. We're not saying we're all yes men. You know, we fully support if somebody's done a not a very good job, you can tell them that. But there's ways to tell people that they need to improve their skills rather than being a complete tool. So it's a very friendly atmosphere. Um, it's a very supportive atmosphere and you'll make a lot of friends. So go and check it out. Dad's put the address in the chat there. Uh, I'll put it in the chat again, though, just in case. Because I don't know where the chat is right now. But I've just posted it in the chat again. Now, there you go. Uh, -ba -da -ba -da -ba -do. Let's have a look. I've got some uh, pronunciations. Cupola says Vasily. Uh, Cupola says Nim. Spid says Cupola. Uh, Vasily says no, it's Cupola and it's decals. Yes, it's decals, not decals. Decals. Good man. Good man, Vasily. Uh, Stick as it says Spid. <laughs> if it's good enough for Fox and Duncan, it's good enough for me, says Mickey Elliott. I think that's not uh, dry brushing. Uh, let's, let's have a look. A proper painter uses whatever techniques give the results you want, says Walter. Yep, that's absolutely true. And like I say, I've come across it before and it makes me angry when people say, well, you can't use this technique because that's not what proper painters do. That's just bull crap. A proper painter, like Walter says, uses anything. I've painted with cocktail sticks. I've put paint on with cocktail sticks. I've made paint chips by scraping paint off with a pin or a, you know, a modeling knife. I've used all kinds of household items. You know, I've used toothpaste as masking fluid. I've used peanut butter as masking fluid when I was desperate once. 
you know, it doesn't matter. I've made I've made crumpled up flags out of post-it notes. There's no there's no right and wrong at the end of the day. The only thing I would ever judge someone on is what the model looks like. And I wouldn't judge the person, I'd judge the model. And again, I wouldn't say that's terrible. I'd say if it wasn't very good, I'd say it's really good. You worked hard. Here's some here's some things you might want to, you know, focus on in the next one. And you, there's ways to do it. But yeah, just, there's no such thing as a proper model wouldn't do that. It's nonsense. Anybody ever says that, I just give them a slap. Uh, I'm still practicing dry brushing on rock formations. I keep putting too much paint on the brush, though, says Quino Man. You really want almost nothing. Almost nothing. Pretty much nothing whatsoever. Let's, let's, um, let's get and brush. And brush. And tissue. Uh, and let's get and paint. That's easy to see. I'm going to kick myself now because it's a nightmare to get red paint. That's not out of the brush. Literally is. Knock the camera. That's always the first step. Knock the camera first. You want about well, let's get let's get a paint where there's actually paint. Hang on. Da, 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 that didn't go well. Right. Let's find a brightly coloured paint you can see. Uh, or let's just use let's use pink. There we go. Right, so you've got your paint there. Give it a shake. You don't want to get the brush in there and go and get it covered in paint. That's what you don't want. You want to get the brush and you want to literally just get that on the end. That's as much as you want. You don't want to get the whole brush in like you're getting paint out of the pot. And then just wiggling it around on the tissue like that. Till. I mean, it depends on the result. You can use more for certain effects, but if you're doing a proper dry brush, you want to get it down till that's too much because it's coming off of my hand. So rub it around. Sometimes it takes more. Brighter colours are harder to judge. Just keep working on it. And eventually, you've got almost nothing coming off. That is perfect now for getting a dry brush, a subtle dry brush. If you're trying to do like me, like blending colours like that, you want almost nothing so you it does it takes a bit of practice but you get used to them being almost nothing because you're building it up in really thin layers by dry brushing so start off with not a lot on the brush get most of it off and if you want a smooth blend from one to the other color work in some i'm gonna do it on here obviously but work in circles go for circles don't if you do it like back and forth you'll just hit the edges if you want to do a blend or a shade work in circles and if you if you're trying to do shading like from color a to color b Try and go for various different shades in between as well. Don't just go from, say, blue to red. Go from blue and then vary through, like, darker blue and then a purple colour and a violet and then to red and then work your way up to red. Try more than one colour. But, yeah, it's, it's, it's not hard once you get the hang of it. It's just don't overload the brush. Don't cover your hands in paint. Don't overload the brush to start with. Uh, know where your kitchen roll is. That's a good idea. <sighs> don't overload the brush. And uh, make sure the brush is dry as got to be dry as bro make sure your brush is totally dry and just make sure there's almost nothing left now red's a bit of a pain because red you can see a mile away so i had to work a bit harder there to get it off but if you're starting off with almost nothing on the brush from the pot then you get it on do a bit of rub and you're in straight away you'll see me do when i do my dry brushing it's i can go quite fast and it does take practice Dry brushing to hit an edge is easy because you just go dabba 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 and you hit the edge by default because that's, that's what you do. But dry brushing to get blends and fades between, like I did with the earth, that's all dry brushed. All this earth shading here is dry brushing. That's three different browns. Uh, Zandri Dust, Screaming Skull and uh, Rhinox Hide. Three different browns blended from Rhinox. I started with Zandri Dust, did this area here. Then I did some, this is in last week's show, I did some Screaming Skull very lightly over the top half and then got a bit denser with it towards the Zandri Dust. So I started off very light, got a bit heavier towards the middle. So then you've got Screaming Skull light, Screaming Skull medium application, then it kind of fades to Zandri Dust. And then I did the, the Rhinox hide at the bottom, brushed that in, faded that up. So work in circles, almost nothing on your brush. It might take you a long time because you've got nothing on your brush. If, you, if you're getting big gobs of paint, you, you're just brushing, you're not dry brushing, so get most of it off. You can do what's called wet brushing, where you have a bit more paint on the brush. But if you want a proper dry brush look, start with almost nothing on the brush, get most of it off, and build it up slowly. Think of it like a glaze, but without liquid. You, you do the first pass, and you'll be like, there's nothing left on the brush, but I can't see anything. You'll build it up. Just go slowly and build it up. 
Uh, let's have a look. Uh, Pascal says, Nim, try train model stuff. That also has a lot of things for dioramas. Yeah, model model railroads and stuff also have like handrails and things. And they, they might even be more to scale with whatever you do. And they'll do anything from, you know, 135th sort of size to up to, you know, 100 scale. I think HO is like 187 scale. So you can probably get away with a bit of back and forth on that. So yeah, model railroad stuff. Forgot about that. Uh, Balaclava Bob says, I love the boom up, but I came off Facebook, so I miss out now. If you, There are some people out there that say, oh, I don't want to use Facebook because they steal all my identity. You don't have to go onto Facebook and set up a profile as your actual name with all your real details. You can set up a pretend profile with a pretend name. And, you know, so if you want to, if you're not sure, you can just set up a dummy profile to, to join the boom up. It's fine. Don't worry about it. Uh... Couldn't pay me to go on Facebook. Forums are way easier and easier to build, says Vasily. Yes, but I don't have that option on my website and I can't afford to run a website and have a have a server. So right now it's the easiest way for me to have 4,000 people uh, all hanging out and posting pictures because it's free. Uh, my website itself, I built that myself, but it doesn't have a forums option. So there's not much I can do with that. Also, forums require a lot more management. I don't have time to sit and manage a forum, whereas facebook a lot of it just does it automatically so uh, bidu, 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 bidu. peanut butter is masking fluid says spid yeah i've used that go for smooth obviously not lumpy although you can use lumpy you'll get different effects <laughs> that's almost as heinous as using marmite to mask no marmite's not as easily removed i wouldn't recommend peanut butter because it does tend to stick and get i mean toothpaste is fine you can get it off of water peanut butter i just tried it didn't really work very well it was brilliant hard to get off copy decks is a good mask says vasily Stinks of fish, though. <laughs> yeah. Earl D's in. Welcome, Earl D. Uh, no step away from the gardening tools. Uh, Maskol smells like Satan's flip-flop, says Balaclava Bob. It's, it's ammonia. Maskol. I love Maskol. It's brilliant stuff, but it's just full of ammonia. And it hums. If you do use Maskol and your model is not varnished, or you've got a gloss acrylic varnish on it, don't leave this on for too long because it's got ammonia in it. And the one thing that ammonia does is break down acrylic paints. So just keep that in mind. That's why one of the, if you say your pledge floor care finish or your pledge revive it or your future or your clear varnish uh, in your modeling stash and you want to clean your airbrush out, you can often use things like, the Americans will use at Windy's, I think, which is a glass cleaner that's got ammonia in it because ammonia breaks down the pledge. So, yes, don't leave it on a model for too long. A few days, probably at the most you want to do. In most cases, you'll just get like a bit of discoloration where it's been, so just go careful with it. Uh, let's have a look. Um, minim, minim, minim. Paul Di Tommaso has just started a 12-hour shift. Whoa. Good luck with that, dude. Uh, Chris at Grace Model says, Oh, while everyone is here, don't forget I have a premiere of my new Tacom Tank Build series in three hours. Uh, oh, yes. Uh, just so you know, most of you know anyway, but I do this every Sunday uh, up till about 6 o'clock. Chris also does a Warhammer live stream at 8 p.m. on a Sunday. Uh, he's working, he's just finished working on his Torox, he was doing a Torox Prime, and he's about to start on either his Mega Knobs, Mega Knobs, or his big um, Orc truck. Uh, but before he does that, tonight at 8 o'clock, I assume he's doing a stream as well, uh, he's got his uh, uh, Tacom tank build starting at 7pm. So go and have a look. Uh, it's gross model, so you can click on his name, it'll take you to his channel. Uh, Jonathan T is in. Yay, overslept, late to work, almost forgot the stream. <laughs> I like the fact you get to work and then you're watching the stream. I like that. Uh, Windex says Spid, yes. Uh, -ba Windies, Windex, Windies. The wife says, says LD, the wife says, I'm a mega knob. <laughs> yeah, I knew that was coming from someone. Paul's not here, so you may as well fill in for him. Right, so that was that bit done. Now, if this was a display queen, if this was going in the, in the, I'm going to zoom out a bit. Oh no, I'll stay there. If this was going in the display cabinet and not going to be played on the table, the next step would be to go in this drawer and get one of these. It's a graphite pencil. It's just a pencil made purely of graphite. So it's just a pencil lead without the pencil bit. Um, and what you can do is you can run this over edges 
and it will give you, I'll show you, I'll just show you. Like, witness the edge of this dozer blade here. Now, if I do that, you can do it with an ordinary pencil, but it just gives it, it might not come out on camera, but it just gives it a very nice metallic shine, almost like a sort of leaded shine. Now, a lot of uh, armor builders will use this on, on tanks and things to go around edges. Like they'll, they'll hit the edge of a model. Let's find an edge. Now I'm not going to use this, but I'm just going to show you. So for example, look at this, this edge here. You want to suggest that so the paint's rubbed away and you've got this burnished metal where people hold it a lot. You can rub your graphite stick or your pencil, just a normal pencil, over it. And you might see there on camera. I don't know if it'll come out. You've got to get the light just right. There's a little twinge there. It doesn't really come out on camera, but it looks like exposed metal. You can sort of see it. It's a lot brighter in real life than on, than on actually on camera. Now you can do this over things like tracks and things. It's a brilliant way. And a lot of armor makers like tank and vehicle builds will use that. However, the problem with doing that is you can't varnish over it to lock it in place because it will kill the shine. You can also, if you want to, you can get them and scrape the graphite off uh, into a little pile, rub it on your fingers, and then you can rub your fingers over things. For example, if I wanted, I would love to do it on these tracks. I get it on there. I've got my fingers and I do that. And I'd rub, and you get this kind of it look a bit like that, but more, more real, like real metal. The problem with it is, it's not permanent. It will come off on your hands. And if I'm playing this on the tabletop, I can't use something that I can't lock in place with the varnish. So it's no use at all if you're going to play it on the tabletop, because you can't varnish it. It's brilliant if you're going to put this in a display cabinet and never touch it, then go for it. You can you can put it on edges where there's no necessarily you've not painted paint chipping, but you can rub it on. Then it'll just give it a little bit of a touch a little bit of a glint in the light it'll catch it say armor builders do it all the time on tanks however can't do that i'm going to play this on the tabletop so i don't have that luxury what i'm going to do instead is i'm going to use my favorite paints the vallejo acrylic and metal colors i've got pale burnt metal here these are some of my favorite metallic paints and very loud they are awesome awesome paints they're also very 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 thin and what I'm going to do here is get a couple of drops. Note Games Workshop dropper bottles. They are good. Make more. Uh, I'm going to get a little tiny bit. So I'm going to get some of that off. I like to clean the nozzle off. Clean your nozzle, lads, because it does pile up and build up. And what I like to do is get a, a very fine brush. Like Again, use an old one, but like an old layer brush, something like that. Get some on. And we're going to basically do a dry brush, but without dry brushing. It's, I don't really know what this is called, but it's something I've done for a long time. I'll get the paint, but I'll get most of it off like that. I'm not going to be rubbing it. I'm just dragging the brush and using a fine pointed brush. And what you'll find is you can then use it to pick out edges. But subtly, you don't have to do it everywhere. Just here and there. And it just catches on edges like that. And it just allows you to do effectively the same thing as the graphite, but because it's a paint rather than just graphite, it's a lot more permanent. I mean, it really is, I suppose, dry brushing, but it's not quite a dry brushing because it's a bit more, there's a bit more on the brush. There's still a reservoir of paint in the brush. And I like to just go around and just, just pick out edges where you want there to be a real glint and you're just adding a shine. Now there's lots of different metallic colors you can use, of course. Doesn't really matter, but I just like these these particular Vallejo ones because they're super fine. The pigment is really, really fine. There's no grain to them, more or less, at all. And this pale burnt metal is a nice reflective one. You've seen me use Duraluminium before in the past as well. Duraluminium is a bit of a darker colour, but still quite nice. What we'll do is we'll just go around. I'll pick up the edges, say, of these bolters. I'll just hit the edge there. Just get that, catch the edge of that barrel. Let's just get a bit more. We'll just hit that there, and that will just pick out that top edge. I'm really sticking to top edges as best I can, just where the light would glint. But I'm just trying to really unload a lot of it off the brush, so it's just a hint of it. A little 
little bit on there. Am I on camera? Yes. Just a touch. Very subtle. I'll do the same on the big heavy stubber here. It's just something that's it's a bit brighter than the Necron compound. As in colour. It's, it's a lighter colour. It's a lighter silver. And because it's been brushed on, not dry brushed on, it's, it's been applied a bit thickly compared to a dry brushing. It's not. It's a bit more shiny as well. So again, it's all about the variation. Remember I said before, it's it's all about the variation. So a lot of people will do like lead belcher, then a null null wash. And then, you know, they might do a bit of a dry brush with Necron compound, or they might go back in with some lead belcher or uh, iron breaker or something like that. And that's fine. But I like to have like a multi-stage metallic if I can. Where I've got different sheen and different shine. So I've got the lead belcher. I've got that's now covered up by the null oil. So it's kind of a darker colour. Then it gets matte varnish. So it looks like it's dull and it's shiny but dulled down by contact and by use. Then you bring in the shiny unvarn the shiny stuff on top of the varnish, and you get like the shiny bits and the specular highlights and the. It just gives you variation. And if you're lucky, you get little tiny brush marks, little scrapes and scratches that look like. You've got the dirty tarnished metal that something scraped across and it's made a little scrape and it just gives the eye something more interesting to look at. So while there is nothing at all wrong with doing lead belcher, null oil and then a dry brush or something else, that's fine. There's nothing wrong with that at all. Remember, these are things you're going to look at from three or four feet away if you're playing on the tabletop. So it doesn't really matter. Um, but if you want to go that step further, you can just do multi-layered metallics like this you don't have to you don't have to at all i just like to it just makes things more interesting and I, i'm i'm quite if i was sensible if i had half a brain uh, i do things on camera if i had half a brain i'd probably go for the quickest way to get these things painted up on the tabletop rather than trying to do a full proper paint job but there's part of me that can't do that i can't just i can't just do the games workshop style base coat layer edge highlight it's just I, I can't but i do acknowledge that i can hear my belly rumbling like a bugger i do acknowledge that there's you know a certain level to which you, you, you can't go you can't go so far because you've got to play this on the tabletop it's going to be handled it's not going to sit in a display cabinet so i stopped short of a proper full-on hardcore paint job like I've not done, you know, old dot filters or uh, streaking or anything like that. You could do, and that would that would survive the, the rigours of tabletop play. But I do need to at some point get these things actually painted and finished. So I can't have the luxury of making every single one a shelf queen, sadly. But there you go, so that is done. Not a lot to do there. It just means now, and it doesn't really come out on camera, I do appreciate that, but it just means now you've got this metallic surface with different layers. You've got the Null Oil tinted metallic that's dull. You've got the Agrax Surshade tinted metallics mixed in, so you've got a mixture of black and brown shading in there, all varied. They're all matte. You've got the shiny um, Necron compound that has a bit of a glint to it, and then you've got the little bit of the metallic paint dry brushed on now that's got even more of a glint, and that's a smaller area. So it's just breaking it up, making it look a bit more varied. A bit more interesting. You see there on the heavy stubber. It still looks dark, but it's got that highlight, that specular look. And I hope that kind of explains it well. It doesn't really come out on camera that greatly, but you know what I mean. You get the idea. It just looks a bit more used. Tell you what I will do, actually. Just one last thing. Because these are meant to be like pistony type things. I'll just put a little bit on here. Just in the middle. Because these are like pistons, they will be constantly exposed to lubricants and moving up and down. So they would actually be probably fairly shiny. So we'll just put that on there to give them a bit of a glint. And there you go. So it looks a bit more, again, I don't know if it comes out on camera. Probably doesn't. Because all the light's in the wrong place, basically. It does to me, because I can see it. I'm looking at it in the right angle, but a bit more. There we go. I don't know if it'll come out. You get the idea anyway. It's, it looks metallic and shiny. And from a distance from three feet away on a table, it would look fine. 
So there you go. That is the Chimera that was gifted to me by my very good friends. Dad for Scott and that lot. Thank you, guys. Uh, that is now pretty much done. I've still got to paint the figure, but I'll do that off camera. Uh, I still have to uh, paint the, the Fresnel glass on the spotlight. And I have to do some... I've got a bit of gold highlight on the skull there. And I've also got to paint the little um, periscope lenses that are on the back and on the front. But I'll do that. I'll do that later on. I'll do that off camera because they're little tiny fiddly bits and I probably want to get them right. So that'll be done off camera. But pretty much that is the Chimera done. I'm really happy with that. I'm really proud of that. The problem is, of course, I've now forgotten half the steps I did. So I've got no way of making all my other vehicles look the same. What I'm going to find is that all my Imperial Guard vehicles, none of them will match. They'll all be different colour schemes because, because of course they will. Why not? <laughs> so it'll be the most chaotic army. Uh, let's have a look. Uh, oh, Nim's off, apparently. Uh, Nim says, I'm off to bed, work tonight, must sleep, then get coffee. Thanks for coming in, Nim. Take care of yourself. And we'll see you again soon. So there you go. That is done. So um, hopefully that's... Uh, that meets with your approvals. I'll zoom out again. So yeah, I'm really happy with that. That's come up really nicely. So what we're going to do, I'll have a quick look at chat. See what you're doing in chat. Uh, we'll do some sticker giveaways and then I'll crack on with the Rooker Truck Squig Buggy for the next hour or so. So let me have a swig of tea. What is tea doing? Well, no, what not tea doing? What's chat doing? Do -do 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 Let's have a look and see. Catch up on the chat. Uh, mm -mm -mm -mm. No, I've not missed a lot in chat at all. Uh, <laughs> Vasily says, proper imaginary armour, the rat. None of this, because Chris is doing the rat. And the mouse, the German concept tanks that never got built. He says, proper imaginary armour, the rat, none of this space rubbish. Banhammer incoming. <laughs> uh, and then he says something that, I don't know. Let's have a look. What did he say there? Yes. Um, let's have a look. So anyway, I caught up with the chat. Glint and Specular are very good words. Stunning work, Fox Candy Graham. Thank you very much. I think the, I think the, 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 the last cannons at the back are a bit bright and shiny. They came out a bit too bright, really. So, yeah, they're not brilliant. I'm not the happiest with those. Might give them another shade layer just to darken them down. But I need to walk away from it at some point. There's only so much I can do. You have to learn when to walk away from things. So, yeah, but it'll look fine on the tabletop. I say, I do think I'll end up with all these different vehicles, none of which match. Because I'll have forgotten all the colour schemes I use. But never mind. Never mind. Right, anyway, let's do some stickers. Oh. T has gone in. Let's do. I'm going to move this out of the way because we're done painting now. <sighs> do, 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 do. Let's do some stickers. Do, 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 do. Put these brushes there. I'll wash those later. So we have some stickers. So we're doing a three hour show after a six hour show. I still think I've got like four and a half hours to go. So as always, we have three stickers. Uh, I've got, I think it's the last one now. I think it's my last. Um, Sprue Crew, my last scaly model sticker, I think. Uh, and one of my model making guru. I shall do the traditional writing the word on the back. Uh, Ld says, you need some summon pink stuff in the army. <laughs> what would to be char? Well, I'm going to have char. I'm going to have three nights. You might not know. I'm going to have three nights. Uh, one will be, one has already been done. That's a Zaku. That's already been built and painted. Uh, one is going to be painted up like a goof. So shades of blue. And one will be painted in nice red colours, reds and maybe pinks, because that will be Char's Zaku Imperial Knight. And all my Tempestus Scions will be painted up to look like in reds and whites, because they'll be like his personal army. So they'll be painted up to look like Char, sort of, a little bit. So there you go. Right, I need three words. Um, let's do some, let's do uh, Gimp. I don't know where that came from. Um, blebs. And, and, uh, blippy. So gimp, blebs, and blippy. There you go. Do, 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 do. LD says black tri stars. Well, the whole, the whole point with the Zeon army was that. 
um, I ran a competition for a paint for a colour scheme and somebody suggested Xeon Army and that's where it came from and the original the idea he said was some black tri-stars so I'm, I'm going to have um, I've not decided on my Imperial Guard rank and file troops I think they're going to be probably just painted sort of like rank and file Xeon soldiers that are all sort of various shades of greens and yellowy greens I think my armoured vehicle pilots like this guy and anybody um, flying in the uh, Valkyries and tank drivers and things. I think they'll be done up like Tristar, so dark grey with the yellow bit in the middle. <coughs> Excuse me. My Scions are going to be painted like Char, so reds and whites. I've had a squad of Space Marines. They've been painted in the same colours as Zaku's. I'll, I can't dig them out because they're in a massive um, Citadel case that I can't get to at the minute. But they're all in various shades of green. The pauldrons and stuff, they're various shades of green. They look like little miniature Zaku's. <coughs> so there you go. To match the Imperial Knight. Uh, right, so. Uh, anyway, where are we? So anyway, yes, getting distracted there. So we've got three stickers. As always, this is going to be the usual thing where I ask you a question. Uh, the first person in chat to get the answer right wins a sticker. Keep in mind, of course, that you see chat differently. Your answer will appear instantly on your screen, but it still takes time to get to YouTube, and I see the way YouTube releases it, uh, receives it. So just because you're first on your screen doesn't mean you're first on the actual chat window. So keep in mind, I see the chat, and you, it's the chat window that you will see when you watch the video back later. It, that's the order it receives it in. So just because you're first on yours doesn't mean you're first in the real world. So anyway, before we do anything, you need to refresh your browser window and drag the slider across because by this point in the evening or the afternoon there is always a lag between the video and the chat so before you do anything refresh your browser window and drag that slider i'll give you a minute now we do have uh we do have three questions sent to me by the lovely scott sutherland from orkley orkley no orkney even wow i'm just making island apparently you live in orkley now scott there you go so Gothorm is in charge of the stickers today because of course he is <laughs> uh, so Scott sent me that obviously so Gothorm will monitor the stickers and see who gets what so yes so I shall get the questions ready do 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 Vasily says you should apply to countdown top words then is that Glinton specular uh, right so anyway yes we have three questions so are we all ready are we all ready? Uh, okay. Right, so first question. Uh, we have three, three different subjects. First question. There'll be Googling required. There will definitely be Googling required. First question. How many puffin species are there? You don't have to name them, but if you do, it'll be cool. But if not, how many species of puffin are there? Go. Google ready, finger steady, says Cy Reynolds. How is your Google food today? Chris thinks there are 746,536 species of puffin. Yeah. One million and six. Uh, Stefan Last is correct with four. He's the first in there with four. There are four species of puffin. They are the Atlantic puffin, the horned puffin, the puffin with horns, it sounds stupid, doesn't it? The tufted puffin, now that sounds more like a puffin, it's not a horn, they have tufts. Uh, and, believe it or not, the rhinoceros orklet. How a, and I get the orklet because an orc's a kind of bird, so an orklet, the rhinoceros, how an orklet or a small bird can be compared to, an, I'm named after a rhinoceros, I don't know. But apparently there's a there's a kind of puffin called the rhinoceros auklet and that's a-u-k-l-e-t so there you go so the atlantic puffin the horned puffin the tufted fuzzy butt puffin it's not really called that and the rhinoceros puffin rhinoceros auklet there you go so um who won that i've forgotten already uh stefan last so stefan would you like gimp blippy or blebs so scaly models guru or Sprue Crew. Which would you like? We shall all look at Stefan silently until he chooses. I'll go with the Scaly Models one. There you go. So you've gone for Blippy. Yes. Now, as always, you all know this anyway, but I'll, I'll, I'll say it every time. 
Uh, if you win a sticker today, send me an email to fox at modelmakingguru.com. I nearly said fox at emodels.com. Fox at modelmakingguru.com. Send them out to that address and tell me which sticker you won. I'll put it in the pile. Now, as we've said before, you all know I've got a big pile of these to give away. I only get to the post office once every month or two. So I do build up a big pile. These are all won by people. No doubt you'll all have two or three in here waiting for it. So if you're waiting, if some of your stickers are in here and you've not received them yet, still send me an email if you win one now, because I use my inbox, my email inbox as my how many people I need to send stickers to list. It's my to-do list. If I don't have an email from you to send you a sticker, you ain't going to get a sticker. So you need to send me, send me your details, name and address and which, excuse me, which sticker you won. Okay. So second question, second question. Uh, Earl D says, Orklet, is that not a baby orc? <laughs> and, and Candy Graham says, I believe so, since a goblet is a baby goblin. <laughs> yes. And now you, this isn't a, que a sticker question, but for those of you who don't know, a baby puffin is called a puffling, and that's the best thing in the world ever. A puffling. Right, so there we go. That's that one. Next question. Uh, an orc orklet is li for life, not just for Christmas. I shall type the word orklet in chat so you can see how it's spelled. It's actually called an orklet. There you go. I guess it's based. Uh, basically, it's a small orc. I know an orc is a kind of uh, not orc like Warhammer. It kind of sounds the same. Anyway, next question. We ready? Total handbrake turn on the theme. Where's the Where's the camera? Total handbrake turn. This is for either the sprue crew or the model making guru. Here we go. During World War Two, get your Google through ready. Um, during World War Two, there was a British officer who carried three things into battle. A broadsword, a long bow, and a set of bagpipes. What was his name? Go. During World War II, there was a British officer who carried three things into battle. A broadsword, a long bow, and a set of bagpipes. What was his name? Oh. See, you can tell when I haven't made the questions up, because when I when I when they're not my questions, they're actually, you know, intelligent questions. When they're made up ones that I do, they're rubbish. <laughs> Uh, I would need, not necessarily his nickname, but I will need his full name. Uh, okay, that's cool. We have a winner. We have uh, Miskatonic University Podcast with Jack Churchill. Yes, he was known as Mad Jack Churchill. I remember reading about him or seeing him once. He literally used to go into battle with a broadsword and a bow. Like it's, it's, it's World War II. You've all got rifles and stuff. Hence his nickname, Mad um, oh, I know this, but I forgot. One of the officers was talking about him a few years back, says Earl D. Ah, too slow there. You snooze, you lose. So there you go, Miskatonic. You've won yourself and sticker. Do you want a gimp or a blebs? So Guru or uh, scale, uh, Sprue Crew. I, every time I look at this, I see scaly models and forget it's Sprue Crew. Woohoo, I actually got one, says Miskatonic. You did. <laughs> Guru, he says, then you shall have that. So all you need to do, Miskatonic, there we go. All you need to do is send me an email, fox at modelmakingguru.com. It's just there. It's just there on the, where's the camera? It's just there, you can see it. Uh, fox at modelmakingguru.com and tell me you've won a sticker and we'll get it out. Include your name and address, obvs, because I'm not telepathetic. <sighs> okay, last question. Uh, last man, uh, apparently, Print Guru says he was apparently the last man to have a confirmed kill with a bow in a war. Apparently. Uh, Earl D says, speaking of officers, going to sign my paperwork on Thursday for a new old job. He's going back to, yes, he's going to be working in the officer's mess again. Good stuff. Good, good stuff. Uh, does that mean, what does that, what does that mean you're a, what, a chef, cook, or what? In that case, can you send me a lot of food? Because that'd be brilliant. Thanks. <laughs> uh, right, so I instantly respect anyone that is involved in preparing food because you become my hero. Right, last question. This might be an easy one for some of you. It might not be an easy one. Maybe some Google fear again. So is everybody ready for the last question for today? Are we ready? In Norse mythology, what is the name of the wolf that comes at the end of the world? So in Norse mythology, what is the name of the wolf that comes at the end of the world? And if you get, if you can include the name of the end of the world, I'll send you another sticker. So if you get both the name of the wolf and uh, the thing that happens at the end of the world, you get a bonus sticker. Uh, second Sheffield's Ildi is going to be cool. 
Uh, oh, okay, we've already got an answer. Osric 9000, straight away. Uh, says Fenrir. Yes, there you go. Fenrir, Osric. Uh, it does also then say Ragnarok, so I'll give you both of them. So you shall get yourself the uh, Sprue Crew sticker. But what I'll do is I'll go into my little bag of stickers. Uh, what have we got? What have we got? What have we got? You know what I'm going to do? I'll send you one of them. <laughs> I'll send you an e-model sticker as well. Why not? I've got one spare lying around. Osric 9000. There we go. So that's a bonus one because you've got Ragnarok as well. Damn, missed by one letter, says Jonathan T. Oh. So there you go. So those are yours. So block me an email. Fox at modelmakinggrow.com and tell me that you won the... Make sure you mention that one as well because I'll forget and I'll be looking at this in about a week and going, why is that in there? So there you go. So well done to everybody who won an stickerings. I do like giving the stickers away. Uh, I'm hoping to get to the post office maybe this week. I'm not sure yet. Again, like I said, I only get to the post office once every few weeks. Or once, or, once, or, once every month or two. Which is a bit of a pain, but I get there eventually. So I will get the stickers out to you. So well done. <sighs> right, swig of tea. Yeah. Uh, now this is done. I'm going to put this back in the cabinet of happiness. Oh, uh, move that first. Oh, ah. Hang on. Cabinet of happiness, go in there and stay there. Do, do, do. Now I do have some things that I need to start painting. I do have the um, Hydra. I do have my Sentinel, my little Scout Walker that's not a Scout Walker. I also have uh, a Sig uh, Sigma monster thing, but I'm not gonna start that. So like I said, what I'll start doing, just to fill the next hour, I'll start assembling me Rooker Truck Squig Boogie. And this is purely because uh, I need to start making space uh, from all my collections of stuff and if it's all shells I need to get some of these built and primed and ready and just sitting in my cabinet because it's better to have it in the cabinet uh, than everywhere else so let's have a look at this rooker truck squid now, this is what gets me right they've got this whole box here they could have made that at least that bigger they could have made it a bit big it's like you could have filled that space a bit better GW you know I don't know I don't know but I like the descriptions on the back. If they made all of them this funny, it'd be great. They've got like a squig launcher and a heavy squig launcher. They've got a rook and roll cage, a saw blade for cutting up other gits. For cutting up other gits. They've got a bitey squig, stick squigs. Oh, I love that. For those, if you don't know what a squig is, um, squigs are basically like a mouth on legs. But what they do is the orcs use them for all kinds of different purposes. They're like just little ferocious things that eat everything. It literally is a mouth on legs. But they use them for things like grenades. They use them for uh, all different. They can put them in weapons and fire them. So they attack people. You've got squigs that actually dematerialize and materialize inside people and eat them from the inside. <laughs> You've got squ all kind of different squigs. Um, and this, this is basically a vehicle that has a launcher on it that fires squigs at the enemy. There's also, there is actually a hair squig. Um, a hair squig is basically a squig that looks like a, a, a ponytail. And what the orcs do is they get this hair squig to chomp onto the head, like with its mouth, um, like that, and it looks like they've got a ponytail because orcs don't have hair. So it's called a hair squig. I love the idea. I've never made a squig, so never yet done a squig. I love the idea of them. Right, let's have a look. So, many sprues. That's it, that's the entire sprue. Uh, and we've got the destructions. So I might not get much done today, but I'll get a few bits cleaned off and, and all that. Uh, so you can see they get a look at the squig buggy itself. Looking pretty awesome. Uh, there's a few vehicles. There's, a, there's, there's a, a game set called Speed Freaks that had all these vehicles in, and you can buy the vehicles separately now. And it's nice that there is some orc stuff, because I would quite like to do some of the orc stuff, but a lot of the orc kits are really old now, and they're like a bit rubbish, so... But I looked at these and thought, oh, I'm going to have some of that. So uh, let's have a quick look at chat before we get going. And my plan here is just to build it up, basically. Get it built up and then I can put it on the shelf and come back to it. Because it's a lot easier for me to have like 20 models on a shelf waiting to be primed or painted than it is to have 20 models still on the sprues in the boxes piling up on in this room, taking up lots and lots of space. So especially GW stuff, because I can build this into my one or two sub-assemblies and, and leave it. I need to get these things built up. Uh, quick look at chat. Uh, 
Osric 9000, now that's a DJ name, says Earl D. Uh, Fox, I'm sending you some mail next week. A video will be required. I may just build a mold for something. <laughs> Dude, <laughs> crazy fool. <laughs> okay. <coughs> Quantum Man says, I suddenly feel the need to get a pet squig. <laughs> built, says Simon. Uh, built. He's made, yeah, I, I can, I'm not, I'll, okay, I'll leave that one, because the chat won't remember, I'll leave that one as a mystery then. <laughs> I was only joking, but cool. <laughs> anyway, let's, um, let's have a look at this. So, people are sending me emails, what are they sending me emails with? Uh, we've got mails from people saying stickers, yes, there we go, good stuff, right. Now, this doesn't look like a complicated build, at all. Because look, <laughs> the axle's already built into the vehicle, look. There's the, there's the chassis, there's the axle. Wheel goes on there. Wheel goes here. Now the beauty of this, the reason I got this, and the reason I quite fancy doing some of these orc vehicles, I'm not going to be doing an orc army. This is nothing to do with my unending forces of the holy contrivance, obviously. It's nothing to do with that at all. Um, but the reason I, I kind of saw these and wanted to get some is, A, they look like intensely good fun to paint. But I like the ethic of the, the sort of the, the animus of the of the orcs. I know Lutin09 describes them as kind of like the most happy and carefree of all the factions in Warhammer 40k. Because they kind of are. Like everybody in 40k is kind of grim and it's the grim dark future and they're all... Rrr, rrr, except the orcs who are like... I kind of see the orcs as just like puppies. They're just giant puppies. Everything's brilliant and they just live to fight. But even, you know, that notwithstanding... They're just quite happy-go-lucky. They don't really, you know, they're not got any greater motivations than just enjoying themselves and having fun. And they also have, um, all their vehicles are kind of made of scrap bits they find on the battlefield and stuff they've reclaimed because they have this, how do you explain it? They have this ability, this mental ability to kind of wish things into working. So, um, you know, and uh, they might build a vehicle or a weapon that would not work you or i built it it just would not work but because the orcs all believe in something if they believe in it hard enough it actually happens so if they build something and they believe in it that it's going to work enough it'll actually work which is why the whole thing about like the joke with orcs is if you paint it red it'll go faster the orcs believe if you paint something red it will go faster so that's why they paint their vehicles a lot of the time red because it will make it go faster because they be it's really weird and it's hilarious that they believe something hard if they wish it hard enough if they believe it hard enough it'll come true and it does <laughs> so there you go so yes yeah, so we're going to build this but consequently what that means is a lot of their stuff is junk it's just junk and scrap and stuff cobbled together which to me is absolute music to my ears because it means it's just going to be dirty filthy scruffy these look really nice and clean we're not having that we're not having that. That's no. It's, it's far too clean. So we're going to be uh, going to be painting this up. So what I'm going to do today for the last what we've we got an hour to go uh, is just get some of this stuff snapped up. Uh, although I didn't know when I bought this. I don't know if you can see this. We'll zoom in a bit so you can see the sprue a bit better. Zooming, zooming, zooming. What I didn't know when I got this because I've never painted a squig before, not in my life ever. And the whole flatbed of the truck is just full of squigs. It's just big piles of squigs sitting around. I'm like, I'm certainly going to get a lot of practice painting squigs. Yeah. Uh, have we got actually it's got a squig I can show you. Let's see if there's actual... There's a squig. Where is it? There's a squig. It's basically a little round thing that's all mouth and two little tiny legs. It's basically, a, like I said, this is the, there's the mouth there. It's basically a mouth on legs. Uh, we've got another squig I can show you. There's a couple more squigs here and there, I think. Uh, squig, there's one. There's the same one. Uh, that is a stick squig, I think. That's somebody's. That's an orc's arm, and he's got a stick squig, which is basically a stick grenade. So you'll throw that, and it'll explode. <laughs> I love the idea. But yeah, so there's a whole flatbed of the truck full of squigs. Just absolutely full of squigs, and I've got to paint all them, and I've never painted a squig before in my life. So there's nothing like jumping in right at the deep end. Yes. So I'm really looking forward to doing this when I get around to painting it. But for now, I shall just get it assembled up, snapped up, uh, built into some assemblies. Uh, Cy Reynolds says, Squig! 40k pug. Yes. <laughs> Critter. <laughs> uh, 
Uh, Critter says Miskatonic. Yes. So all I'm going to do is get this snapped up and uh, get a little bit of building going on. I'll probably spend the rest of this evening putting it together and then it'll go on the shelf until I can paint it. So let me have a look and see. See, I'm not normally the, the the person that wants to paint figures with lots of flesh and things like that and knocking the camera. I'm not really one for painting lots of flesh and things, but because I painted that um, Super Mutant from the from the Fallout game, painted that figure and that was quite good fun. I kind of got the idea of painting greens. I'll zoom out again because I'm zoomed in, aren't I? Let me zoom out again. There we go. Uh, I don't think it'd be too bad to paint these guys. Uh, and if you don't know, by the way, orcs, they're fungus. They're, they're actually a f kind of fungus. Bizarrely. Just, just so you know, orcs are actually a kind of fungus. How cool is that? There's a squig. You can't see it now. Uh, I'll see if I can zoom in. Until I zoom in again. You, oh, let me zoom in. Hang on. Hang on a minute. There is it. There's uh, a Gretchen. Stood behind a squig and the squig is there. It's just a mouth. Ignore this bit, that's a dude. This bit here is a dude, but that bit there is a squig. Two legs and a big massive mouth. There we go. That's a little zoom out, making the camera wobble. Wibbly wobbly camera. Uh, let's have a look. Squig looks like the demonic version of a tribble, pretty much. This is what happens if you feed a tribble after midnight. <laughs> Among Us, says Miskatonic. Uh, Fungus the Orky Man. <laughs> yeah, they kind of do look, um, as I never thought that, but they kind of do have that kind of fungus, the thingy look to them, the orcs. But they are actually a kind of fungus. So there you go. Right, so, do some basic assemblage. Uh, 28 and 51. Oh, really? What's 51? Oh, okay. Oh, I see. 28, 51, 4 and 5. There we go. So 28 is the big flatbed area. And I don't know why, but orcs universally are portrayed as speaking with like a voice like that, you know what I mean? We're orcs. We're not very smart. Like they're extras off the bill or something. Paint it red makes the car go faster. Yeah, that's right. Doodly -doo, doodly -doo. There we go. First part cut off. <coughs> Sai, what are you like? You crazy fool. I was only joking, but never mind. You crazy fool. <laughs> uh, 50, 51. You're a nutter. That's what you are. 51. Uh, 51. Now, I'm using my big Citadel nippers here um, because, as you see, I've got my god hands and I absolutely adore my. I'll put the thing right there. I do adore my god hands. But. The nubs on these kits are huge. These things have got nubs that in other kits would actually be parts. So I want to try and minimise. I don't want to make my, my god hands explode into exploding deathness. So I tend to do all the cutting off the sprue with the big citadel ones. And I'll use the I'll use the, the god hands where there's very tiny nubs or where there's just little tiny bits I need to cut off. Or where I can, you know, trim back. Like for example, these bits here, they're really quite tight but once I've got them off the sprue I don't even know if that's on camera once I've got them off the sprue of course I can go back in with the god hands and just gently trim them back do, 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 do. so that's that bit oh, I'll just put that paint up there out of the way do 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 so anybody that's joined us that wasn't here at the beginning, um, same question as always, because I forgot to ask earlier on. Anybody who didn't answer this before, what's in your bench and what's in your belly? So what have you got on your workbench at the minute and what are you planning to have for your dinner this evening? If you've not had it or if you have had your dinner already, what did you have? Tell me about food. So I'm trying to I'm trying to not eat as much and lose a bit of weight. So if I can vicariously have talks and conversations about food that I'm not then going to fucking have to eat. Although my stomach's rumbling like a volcano at the minute, which is a bit rubbish. 
then it's just a vicarious way of me getting nourishment without actually having nourishment. There we go. So I can nip that off with these because it's not too bad once I'm in there. If you do have some god hand or any other kind of expensive nippers, the golden rule is do not cut with the tips as much as possible. Avoid that. You need to cut with the middle of the nippers. It even says in the instructions. I saw a post once. A guy put up a photograph of some god hands. Uh, and the very tips had snapped off. And he's like, these are rubbish. These are r I've only had them on a few days. And I did, and the, the end fell off. Uh, and every single person basically pointed out to him and said, the first thing you see on the packet when you open them is a picture saying, do not cut from the tip. Because they're delicate. And if you can hear my stomach rumbling, I do apologise. My stomach is really rumbling right now. Uh, yeah, they're all like, you're an idiot. It says on the instructions right in front of you, the first thing you see, it says, do not so you cut with the tip. Now, I do sometimes, because sometimes you can't get around it. You can't get in an edge. But I try and keep it to the absolute minimum where possible. As long as you're careful. But yeah, it's funny. I have to go in with the knife on that one. I need to go in with the knife. I can't get my nippers in. Oh, no, I can't. There we go. Yes. Excellent. Excellent. Yeah. Uh, Richard says, right, I'm off. See you later. Bye-bye. Thanks for coming in, Richard. Thanks for coming and saying hello. Enjoy the rest of your Sunday, buddy. We shall see you anon. See you next time. Mm -hmm. uh, we have uh, Miss Katonic says I'm finally able to work on models again now that my semester is done it's been three days now I have three kits in progress well you've just jumped right back in at the deep end haven't you? you've gone ah, need to build all the things is that now are you free now and you have to go and get a job or is that are you back again have you got another term coming up is this your break your summer break Do, do, do. Or have you got now like, you know, six or eight weeks to build a thousand kits? Do, 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 I love this. It's got like, you know, it's got like wood bits of wood on there and the feet for the orchid on the pedals. But it's got like checker plate there and it's got like wood panel there. Literally proper wood. Bits of wires and stuff. All kind of cobbled together technology. Uh, put that there, put that there. Now remember folks, if you're trimming nubs with your knife, don't do like me and do it towards yourself. I'm a professional idiot. I'm well trained in stabbing myself. I'm like, you know, like a stuntman. Like a, a fighting, like the person who's paid to do sword fights for movies. I know how to stab myself in such a way that I won't die. Whereas you don't, you just stab yourself and you'll die. So don't don't be like me. <laughs> cut away from yourself. I don't know why I just I can't cut away from myself. I can't do it. I just I'm trying. I just like ah, I can't do it. Just, my brain doesn't function properly if I try and get away from myself. Okay, bit of that trimage, trimage, trim tacular. Yes, I won't be. I won't be painting this in episodes because this isn't part of my army. My real plan is that I'm. I'm only going to work on my army during the, these shows. This is just because I've got nothing else to work on right now. So, um, there are a couple of things I need to paint for my army, and that's why I'm doing this because this I can start work on them next week. But because I was doing loads of stuff yesterday. I kind of wanted a relaxing day today with this live stream. I was doing the the, the despruing and denubbing yesterday, so I wanted a bit of a relax this afternoon. And this is a bit more relaxing. I don't have to think. That can just be taken off. Diddly bomb, diddly bomb. Have a quick look at the chat in a moment. I don't know what's for dinner tonight. I know not. Uh, Scott Sutherland's got a Tyran Fort on the bench. IDF armour. Kill surprise. Uh, uh, not eaten yet, he says. What will you have for your what will you have for your eats then, Scott? What are you thinking? How are you for takeouts in Orkney? I mean, how are you for like, you know, if you want 
like takeout food and stuff. Are you like a thousand miles? Is are all the takeaways on the other side of the off uh, the island, or are you replete with takeaways and all kinds of things, or is it a bit sort of minimal pickings? What about franchise stuff? I mean, I know you're not living in the third world, and there's like you know many many thousands of people on Orkney. I'm not, I'm not quite that bad, but it's just a, you know interesting question because I don't know. I don't know what it's like. Now these I'm going to glue together, but I'm not going to sand them really. I suddenly realised I started sanding it, but there's no point because I've got to make sure they're the same width and dimension. So that needs to go like there. We'll see. There we go. So I'm going to glue these together first, and then I'll come back and sand them later. There's two halves of the, of the muffler. There's no point sanding them properly now, and then trying to stick them together because all that will happen is I'll sand them. At individually if ever you've got like a tube shape or something with two halves and you've got a nub on each side there's no point at all in sanding the individual pieces and then trying to glue them together because you'll sand them differently and you'll end up with especially when it's like a tube like this two halves with different diameters so it's best to get the nub off, get it reasonably flat, glue it together, and then come back and sand it later. Because what I'm doing now, I've got these two halves of the muffler here that you guys can't see. Stick them together, the glue will splooge out and give me a little bit of a seam filling gap. I'll come back and sand that, sand it round to a cylindrical shape, nice and smooth, gets rid of the seam line, and also removes any vestiges of, of nubbage. So if you've ever got two halves of something like two, you know, tube halves, don't sand them because you'll end up like that. Get the nub off, stick them together, glue it, splooge, sand it back later. You'll be fine. Just helps you get, especially with the things like gum barrels and exhaust tubes and things like that. Just helps you get a nice smooth tube. Smooth tube. Uh, now this is a wheel, so I don't really need to worry about this too much because this is just where the wheel sticks on. It doesn't really matter if it looks brilliant because you're never going to see it. Let's get a flap off there though. So this is purely functional nub removal, it's not cosmetic. Uh, right, what's chat doing? Uh, Simon Reynolds is off to the in-laws for a roast dinner. See you all later, folks. Thanks for coming in, Simon. See you soon, dudes. Enjoy your roast dinner. And, you know, maybe enjoy the in-laws as well, I suppose. It's always possible. Uh, Lord Barclay's in. Welcome, Lord Barclay. The El Camino is a gift for my instructor at school. Oh, I'll go back. I'll start that again. Uh, Miskatonic says, I have a 69 Chevy Nova that I'm painting as the G2 car from Battle of the Planets. Oh, nice. A 1960 El Camino that I'm painting. Is that the is that the, the pickup truck? But it's not a pickup truck. It's like half a car and half a pickup truck. Is that the El Camino? Because that looks mint. Uh, as the 66 Batmobile. Oh, obviously not then. And an Ecto-1 with full electronics. Cool. Oh, it's my summer break. I'm in tech school for electronics. I have one year to go. Yay. Snowman says, I once stuck a scalper through my thumb at cutting away from myself. I, how would that, if that's a knife, how would you, you hold it with that hand, you cut away from yourself. How do you, how do you have your hand here when you're cutting, I don't, my brain, I can't, there's no, hold a thing, blade, away. <laughs> I don't know how I would stab my thumb because my thumb's here. How, do, how were you holding it like this and doing that? Were you were you holding it there and doing it like that? Because that that's not what we mean. We mean hold it and that way. I don't. I I can't. There's no. My brain. Is, sorry, can't pass that one. You get an award for that, I think. Uh, Candy Graham says, congratulations, Miss Catonic. Uh, electronics is a challenging subject, but can be a lot of fun too. I tried studying electrics once and electronics and stuff. I just, no concept. I watch the Electro Boom channel, but half the time I don't know what he's talking about. I just find him vastly amusing. Uh, he's also building a full-scale R2-D2, so all the stuff, R2-D2, so all the stuff I earn at school is going into him. Cool. Dad says, fish finger butties. Mmm, now there's a the thing. Dad, make it happen. Fish finger butties. Yes, half car and half truck. Yeah, the El Camino. I love the El Caminos. I love that look. I just, it's a nice car. Uh, Scott says, here we go. Orkney, Orkney takeouts. No franchise chains like McD's and stuff. 
Yeah, I didn't expect that. We have three Chinese takeaways, a couple of curry houses, and numerous chip shops and food vans. Nearest to me is Kirkwall, about six miles away. And Gross Model says, oh, no McDonald's, I'm not visiting. I can quite happily live without McDonald's. Now, if there was a Burger King, I'd be... If there were, I'm, I'm more upset there's no Burger King. I don't mind McDonald's. I prefer Burger King. I've recently discovered the joys of Kentucky Fried Chicken. I have to be honest here. This is something I've recently discovered. Now, how is this axle going to assemble? I've got some bits to clean off. My teacher is rebuilding a real one, so I'm making him a model. Oh, right, right, got you. That's the El Camino. Cool. I was using the thumb to stop my model from sliding away from me. I still can't. I, you hold them. Were you doing that? You're holding it like that and doing th that, that maybe? Pointy bit that. I still can't quite figure that out. You've, you've broken me. You've broken my brain, my thinking parts. I think you do need to get some kind of award for, for making it physically impossible to figure out how the hell you did that. I just, I just, no. I just, no. I don't understand. It's just bizarre. So I can't, I can't do cutting away from me at all. I can't. Not small bits anyway. No, I can't get the blade in there. So we're going to have to file this one. Filing, filing, filing. Nub gone. This is very nice plastic. This is proper games workshop. Beautifully crisp and moulded. But it's ever so slightly squishy plastic. But we're not talking Airfix here. We're not talking like Airfix is bizarre rubbery plastic that I don't really like. Uh, we're talking it's just nice. Now it's not like the Warhammer Conquest stuff either which is beautifully sculpted and crisp again but the Warhammer Conquest stuff is like a it, it's hard to explain it it's brittle but softer at the same time. It's it's the Conquest stuff is it's a nice plastic to cut it's, it's a bit cuttable like butter but at the same time it's kind of brittle when you sand it. It's weird. It's very weird. Okay, so that's that bit of axling's done. I need my favourite tool in the world. Do 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 do. Do 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 do. He's also a fan of the '66 Batmobile, as any sane person is. So I'm painting it that way. Kick ass. Yeah, '66 Batmobile. It's, just, it's one of the best cars ever designed ever. It just looks perfect. It's just great. You can't not like that old Batmobile. If you don't like that bumper bill, you're just illegal and should be banned. Everybody likes that car. Now here's a question for here's a here's a question. Here is a question for the chat. Because as we all know in chat, intelligent, smart people, sensible people with you know great intelligence and wit and sagacity, all understand that Batman is far superior to any of this Marvel magical powers nonsense. Batman is far superior to all this Superman drivel and special people that can fly and magic powers rubbish. Batman's just a dude, he's a detective. So we all understand that Batman is far superior to all of that. This is taken as red. However, here's a question for you. Which is your favourite uh, movie? Yeah, I'm qualifying it, you see. Which is your favourite movie Batmobile? I'll give you a hint. There is a correct answer, and the correct answer is, of course, the one from the 1989 Batman movie. That's the correct answer. If you're truly a smart person, you will say that. But uh, I'm letting you answer however you want. But you should say that one. So for me, it's, yeah, it's the 1989 Tim Burton Batmobile. Because that's mint. That is a gorgeous looking vehicle. But you may have different opinions. So if anybody mentions Joel Schumacher's Batmobiles, they'll just be banned. If Paul was here, I'd, he'd have permission to ban them from the chat. <laughs> so I think it really boils down to, is that one or the tumbler, isn't it? I just like that Batmobile. It's just a beautiful, beautiful piece of machinery. Oh. If I had lots and lots of money, I would pay someone to build that. And I would drive it around. I'd also pay someone to restore it. 
Mark III Cortina to full factory condition, put a modern engine in it, modernise it completely and drive that around as my daily driver. But hey, that's just me. Now, doing an experiment here. Remember I glued this about, what, 10 minutes ago? Uh, now, sometimes when you glue things together, you might have to wait an hour, maybe two hours, for the glue to dry enough that you can start sanding it back and sorting it out. However, I found with Tamir Extra Thin, I swear it's going gonna, it's gonna to bite me in the ass now and misbehave, but you can actually go in maybe five or ten minutes later. If you've got one of these um, seam line removal tools, you can actually go in like five or ten minutes later and start scraping away. And it will have set just enough that it's not going to leave an icky sticky mess. But it's set enough that it's filled in the panel gap for you, the, the, the seam line. And you can quite happily scrape that away. And there'll be no evidence of your seam line at all. So if you ever, if you tend to sit there and you wait for like two hours for the glue to fully set and stuff like that, if you're using extra thin, get one of these. This is, don't, don't use a model knife. A modeling knife doesn't seem to work. A modeling knife seems to rook the glue up a little bit and you can get a blobby mess. But this thing, because it's like four and a half feet wide and it's just made of a panel of a sh like a piece of steel plate from a ship, uh, it will nicely just smooth that glue away and that's been like what 10 minutes if that and now because I've smoothed the excess glue away of course I can come in with a sanding stick in a moment and sand that as well so if you ever if you ever get sick of waiting for that you don't need to now this is with Warhammer kits with the Games Workshop plastic I don't know you'd have to try experiments on if you make other things like you know trumpeter or dragon or whoever your you know Ravel or whoever your preferred model kit manufacturer is bandai and stuff you would have to do some experimentings to try it out on other kinds of plastic uh, but i can tell you for a fact it, it's brilliant on games workshop stuff because it's taken me in the old days i would because i didn't i didn't i'd never tried it i'd glue this together and then i'd have to stop i'd have to put that to one side for like two hours an hour but I've kind of realized recently you don't need to. You can go in within five minutes. And I'll tell you another thing. If you use sprue goo for small gaps, like, you know, if I was filling that with sprue goo, for very small gaps, you can go in after about half an hour and do this. But it's only for where you've used a little bit of sprue goo because it's, it's, it's not fully cured, but it's cured enough that you can then go in and do your, your smoothing and sanding. But it does seem to be this puppy that makes it work, work. If I did that with a modeling knife, that would have just, it would, what I found is it gets stuck in the, the trace of glue. The blade catches in the glue. It jumps around, it skitters, it scratches. It makes blobs because this thing is inflexible. It doesn't bend. It just goes, it just gets the glue and goes, get out of the way and just pushes the glue away. Whereas a blade doesn't, a blade gets stuck and jumps around. So yeah, if you're feeling little seams like that, give it a try. A bit of Tamir Extra Thin, squish it together. Come back after 10 minutes and give it a try. Uh, so this can now go on the back end. Uh, and it just goes on there like that was it. Little bit of an exhaust pipe. Does it go in a particular direction? Or does it just plonk on? We've got to get the seam line off this chassis anyway, so let's do that first. Carefully avoiding the axle that I've just stuck on there. I've got to tell you, Americans in the audience will get will get this straight away. I've got, for some reason, I don't know why, I've got the theme tune for Three's Company in my head. I have never, ever seen Three's Company. But I've got the theme tune in my head. I don't know why. I can't sing it, because, you know, copyright. That one. Why have I got that in my head? I've never even seen it. I don't even know what Three's Company is. I've obviously heard the theme tune at some point and picked up on it. And now it's stuck in my head. I just... The most cheesiest tune. I've heard the theme tune before, and it is the cheesiest thing I've ever heard. How much of this is visible? Is this going to get covered up, or is this going to get stay visible? It gets. Does it get covered up? It gets. 
Diddly bomb, a diddly bomb, a diddly bomb. A diddly bomb. A diddly bomb. Where's it go? Where's it go? Where's it go? I can't find it. Uh, okay, it gets partially covered up. Okay. I like to check sometimes. If, if something's going to be mostly covered up, I don't need to worry too much. Except this bit isn't going to be covered up, is it? Wow, it's really struggle. Oh, there we go. Yes. Uh, if, it, if it's going to be mostly covered up, I don't need to worry so much about getting rid of every single bit of sanding mark and thing. I can... I can... I'll still sand it down and smooth it, but I don't need to panic if there's still a little bit of a sanding mark. I can focus elsewhere. My attention's... See, that's a bit scrapey and scratchy there. There's some sanding marks in there. That's fine. You're not going to see that. I just wanted to get rid of the nub. But if it was a bit you would see, I'd obviously work on it to get it nice and smooth. Smooth and round and earthy. There's a seam line on there, but I don't care because that's going to be covered up with the wheel. I'm just getting rid of the nub. I'll do it with the file. It's easier. So I have no idea why the Three's Company theme tune is in my head. It's a real cheesy, it's the most cheesy ass thing you can imagine if you've never heard it. Go on, go and look it up on the YouTubes now. God knows why it's in my head. I've got no idea whatsoever. Utterly, utterly no idea. Uh, Candy Graham says, Three's Company was one of the greatest cheesy shows ever. Everyone watched it and it was dreadful. <laughs> Everyone watched it and it was dreadful. Uh, right, let's see if I killed everybody and made everybody angry with my chat about Marvel. Uh, uh, Snowman said, oh no, there we go. Um, got to go and eat Hobby Town. Start again. Got to go eat and Hobby Town to get my son some motors for his project. Well, thanks for coming in, Walter. Nice to see you. He says, have a great day. He's already gone now. I always, I always notice people have gone after they've gone. Uh, the 60 El Camino has fans already. That's the inspiration. Cool. Fins even. Fans. I'm an idiot. Uh, well, and all the things I didn't, all the things that didn't load and I thought I messed up posted all at once. Okay. Uh, Miss Katonic is also partial to the animated Batmobile. You mean the uh, 1990s animated series? It's, I had a toy one of those. It was like a, just a brick. That was, it was in the spirit of the 89 Batmobile, but it wasn't as stylish and beautiful. It was beautiful design. Beautiful design. Tim Burton Batmobile agreed, says Wayne Haywood. Beyond Hope says, can't say Marvel have all the magical flying heroes. Martian, Manhunter and Superman in DC may complain. Well, no, I'm including, I'm including, that's why I said Superman, because Superman is rubbish. Just Superman is nonsense. Superman is just, ugh, it's just nonsense there's no grit there's no dark there's no batman's just a dude and he's a detective superman is just, oh, just there's nothing there there's no substance it's all just magical powers capes flying nonsense ponciness so superman's just a great big ponce whereas batman's dark and gritty and that's what we want uh, I learned a new word just now, says Candy Ram. Sagacity. This channel is education in so many ways. Do you know where I learned the word sagacity? The next generation. I'm watching the next generation. I'd never heard of the word until I watched the one where Moriarty uh, becomes self-aware in the holodeck. And uh, the woman describes Picard as having... Uh, well, I think she describes Picard or uh, Moriarty as having wit and sagacity. And I vowed from that day forward that I would remember that word and use it. But yes, you always learn something on one, on one of my shows. It's never anything necessarily useful. But it's something. Now you can use it in everyday conversation. Do, 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 seam line removal tool. Let's get rid of the seam line. Roger, removing seam line on for up and... Oh, never mind, that joke died. I'll just give up. Stop in now. You know, when you start to make a joke and then you realise, A, you've got it wrong, and B, nobody will get the reference. But now I've got the name Ding Chavez in my head. Roger, open frag and clear on Zulu. Ding Chavez, what a stupid name. What kind of bloody name is Soap? 
<laughs> now that's a proper silly name. So you do a silly name properly. Got to tell you, Modern Warfare, the original Modern Warfare. I, I have no interest in Call of Duty games. But when I realised it was Don Beach doing a voice in that, being Captain Price, I'm like, Don Beach from The Bill? I'm buying that game. What kind of a bloody name is Soap? <laughs> Don Beach. That bloke's a slag. Uh, the exhaust pipe goes on here like this. See, that way round, I think. A little bit of a seam line still there, visible. Could be collected with some glue. Well, I'll put some glue on that in a moment. Uh, we need to attaching. Are we attaching the, the exhaust pipage? The exhaust pipage is attachings. I shall be attachings now. A little bit of glue on the knobbly bit. Stick that on there. That sits in. It fits perfectly. You have to rotate it round. If you put, if you're doing this yourself, you have to rotate it round because it, it locks into place. It doesn't sit straight into automatically. You have to rotate it round, and it has a slight angle to it. It locks into place like that, you see, and therefore it's the right way round. Yeah, it's great days. It's lovely days. It's lovely. I'm all stuck on the bill now. Wow, oh, it's lovely days. Um, what's happening? Uh, 1989 one was based on the 1950s Batmobile and a Formula One racy car. Awesome, says Quano Man. Just, just, just beautiful. It was a beautiful piece of design. I need to make a model of the 66 Batmobile. That's on my car list. There is the Polar Lights Batmobile. However, I would urge you strongly, strongly, to go and watch um, Dr. Faust Painting Clinic build because he does the 66 Batmobile and he has, I think it's the Polar Lights, but he has some issues with their decals and some other bits of the kit so before you commit any money go and go and watch his video you might find it's a bit challenging uh the tumbler was by far the best but not the best vehicle and the, the bike from dark knight was the best a snowman uh tumbler was just uh, it, was, uh, it was practical but it wasn't it was just uh, it just, it literally was a, there you go, it's, it's a thing. It's, it had no style or grace. The, the 89 Batmobile was a beautiful thing to behold. It was long and sleek and had this kind of art deco. The whole film was very art deco. It's, oh, it's, yeah, it's my favourite Batman. It's Tim, it's uh, 89 Batman. That's my Batman. It's my Batman. It's funny how the older generation don't like the Tumblr. Like Paul DiTomasa, I don't like the Tumblr. People my age, we're like, eh, Tumblr. <laughs> and 89 Batman, that's my Batman. The original Adam West Batmobile, says Pete Rogers. Yeah, I, th uh, I think we were excluding that one. Did I not say that? I don't know. I mean, yes, that is the best, but obviously. Tumblr looks like the Scrap Heap Challenge. Got free matte, matte black paint, says Ves uh, Vesely. So that's in. Afternoon all. Been a bit late watching the tour to Yorkshire. Hey, <laughs> what a going around old chip shop. Uh, three. Uh, doo -doo -doo. I love Batman movies, but the Dark Knight trilogy are the best because they were believable. Like you could see these things happening in the real world. Says Snowman. I would agree. They're very good films. However, however, and this this is why I cannot watch them again. I shall get a pen. I shall demonstrate. It's Fox's drawing time again. Now, this is going to be rubbish because it's going to be rubbish. Can you actually see any of this? Right, there we go. You won't be able to see any of this, are you? Right, hang on. <laughs> right, can you see this or is it too overexposed? It's way too overexposed. Anyway, Tim Burton's Batman. Head like that. Nice pointed ears. Bit of a face. Like that. Very subtle cowl. Chin. And it had the advantage, because you've got that there, you see. Of course, you've got the eyes here. It's very exaggerated, I know. That's all black and dark. You've got a bit there like that. Black here. You've got the eyes there. But the, the difference is, because you've also got Michael Keaton's mouth, which kind of looks like the bat symbol, because it's kind of like that shit. And it, it just, it looks, it's the, the cowl there that goes down to his chin. So you've got that there, and then there's like, you got that kind of bit of his chin there. It, it looks great. You got the cowl. 
See, that looks good. Now, the Dark Knight films. You've got the same kind of basic head shape. You have the same kind of eye shape like that. But then you get a little bit there. You get a little thing with his mouth and his face. And it's like, what the hell is that? It's like he's wearing a, a, a ski mask. It's like he's wearing a, a balaclava. I'm like, I can't, I can't watch it because his mouth annoys me. The little hole, little tiny breathing hole for his mouth just makes me annoyed. And I want to go out and break things. I don't know why. It's just that one little touch made me instantly dislike those films. And let's just be honest, in the first film, you can't tell a word he's saying in the back voice. It's like, uh, uh, uh. There, there's a great video on YouTube or somewhere. Some actor, I don't know who he was, some guy, he spoofed. Uh, Batman interviewing John. Go and look it up later. He did a spoof of the Batman interviewing the Joker in the in the in the in the police interview room, and he plays both parts. He plays the Joker and he plays Batman, and it's hilarious because it's playing on the fact that you can't tell what Batman says. So he's there, and Batman's like, and then the Joker's like, I can hear noises. I'm not getting words. I don't know what you're asking me. He's like, I don't know what you're saying. What you're saying. So like Batman punches him and he goes, I'm getting hitting. I'm not getting talking. I need the words smack. No, that doesn't help me hear the words. And it's just hilarious. And that's how I saw that first Batman movie. That first Christopher Nolan one. I'm like, I can't tell what he's saying. And that mask makes me want to go out and punch someone. Oh. So they're good films, but I can't watch them. I can't watch them again. Uh, did I go off on a rant then? I do a <laughs> Don't get me started on things. Sometimes I go off on one when I get things that bug me. Um, Candy Graham mar married with children was close. Yeah, it was kind of funny though in the nineties when I was a kid. <laughs> Superman is way too sanitized and middle class, says Adster. Exactly, he's just a big girly ponce, basically. If you think Superman isn't dark, get the Injustice graphic novel. Wow, no, because to me, I just sit there and I think you're just this big poncy bloke with all the powers. You can't shoot me, okay. I mean, yes, he's got some vulnerabilities here and there that they really desperately have to kind of figure out how to do it. But like Batman, he's just a guy. You shoot him in the face, he's dead. There you go. So, I don't know. Superman's a detective. Uh, Miss Tonic University, Dan, he's out. Gotta go to work. Gents, have fun. Thanks for coming in. He does say Dan. But yes, it's Dan. I knew it was Dan. Uh, yes. So, yeah, Batman to me is just... Why is that not... There we go. Um... Yeah, Batman's vulnerable. He's just a dude. He's a detective, whereas Superman's just a big pons. Big pons. Uh, people talking about He-Man. I will do so. Thanks, Fox. I don't know what I said, but never mind. Good. He-Man is harder than Superman. Fact, says Vasily. I would agree. Draw a hamster, says Chris at Gross Models. I might do that next week. Uh, Vasily draws Richard Hammond. Fail! <laughs> Adam Minster's afternoon all the 66 Batmobile is best and it was used in the film. It still counts. True. I can see your point, says Snowman. Yeah, it was just that mask. It was the, it was the cowl. It's, it's the mouth hole. All three films, I'm like, dude, you just need to... Ooh, you, oh. you know, like when somebody wears an item of clothing that is just a little bit too big or a little bit too small. And you're like, how can you not see the, what you need to do to change it? Just, ooh, ooh. It's like talking to someone and they've got a little bit of, say, spinach stuck in the teeth or a bit of lettuce on the side of the mouth or something or a bit of food and you're like you just kind of want to go dude can you just can you oh, oh, oh you can't though you can't say it because you feel bad but yeah it's, it's weird i'm getting i'm getting i'm triggered <laughs> totally triggered <sighs> right next bit i uh, need 14 and three 14 and also three so 14 Let's see. Let's see if we can find part four. Oh, I need to zoom out, don't I? I'm zoomed in. Sorry, guys and girls. There we go. Am I also? Am I actually in focus? I am now. Hey! Uh, Eman Da Vinci subscribed to us earlier on. Welcome, Eman. I forgot to say welcome, but welcome. Uh, I can sell oh, yeah, so, uh, it. So right about Bales' voice sounds like he's gobbling it. Uh, steady now. Steady now. I nearly read that out. Uh, right, where are we? 14 and 3. So 14. Let's see if we can figure out where this will be. So we want, let's have a look. 10. 
25. That's not going to work then, is it? Let's find... Let's find 12. There's 13. So 24 or 59. Oh! Oh, there's a little, you can't see it, there's a little tiny, 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 tiny squig there with wings. <laughs> tiny micro squig. Uh, actually, no, the 14's here, to be honest. I think, is it? Oh, is it? Uh, no, 14? 14? It's a big piece with the, it's there. It's this big puppy here. Of course it's there. Why wouldn't it be there? Why wouldn't it be next to 33 and 22 and 16? Of course it would. Everybody can figure that one out, Fox, you spoon. Oh, Games Workshop, don't ever change. <laughs> no, actually do, do, in some ways do, please. <laughs> yeah. Oop, ping. Uh, add three. I want three is the fuel tank barrel. I don't know why, but I have a liking for barrels and things stuck on the side of vehicles. Fuel barrels. I'm going to assume this is part three. Has it got the number on it? It is. It's like when I do eventually get myself a Bane Blade, because I will get a Bane Blade, because I just want to make a big-ass tank. Uh, when I do get myself a Bane Blade, I'll be getting the extra sprue and sticking like 100 barrels on it. Because of course you want barrels and fuel tanks all over it. Ow. I do encourage you though, once this stream is finished in about half an hour, do go and do a Google YouTube search for... Uh, Batman interview the Joker because the guy that does it apart from the fact it's just freaking hilarious because it nails exactly the fact that you can't tell what the hell Batman is talking except Christian Bailey saying <clears throat> the guy that plays both the Batman and Joker I don't know who he is I think he did a few videos but I don't know who he is but he's actually really really good he does a really good impression of both of them it's actually quite stellar <clears throat> oh excuse me Barrel. Little bit of sandwich. Now, can you imagine? From one extreme to the other. Can you imagine? Here's a, here's a thing for your mind to consider. Can you imagine if somebody at some point cast Brian Blessed as Batman. Oh, 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 can you imagine that? Brian Blessed! I'm Batman! Whoa, that'd be brilliant. That'd be the best. There'd be no sneaking around. There'd be no stealth. That'd be great. That'd be Brian Blessed as Batman. I'm just giving myself uh, a million dollar license to print money there, I think. So this goes that way. Look at that beautiful, beautiful fuel tank. Lovely. Just fits on like that. I love the fact that every single Games Workshop fit fits like a dream, apart from the ones that don't, but we never discuss those. I have to say, you know what? Yeah, I have to say. I've, I've been doing models for since I was a little kid, so probably about 35 years now, if not more. And I have to say, when I grew up making models, it was a great time, obviously, because you're having fun, you know, air fix and all that kind of stuff. And then I, I fell out of the hobby for 20 years. Well, 20 years. I fell out of the hobby for a long time. Got into other things. I got into, you know, I was writing music. I was doing... Actually, there's going to be a seam line down there. I'm going to squish this. Because there's a seam line down the middle of the barrel, the fuel tank, where it joins to the chassis. So I'm going to put some glue down there and make sure that gets sanded away. So I'm going to squish it at the back. There we go. I'm going to squish it at the front, but I'm going to squish it at the back. So I get a splooge of glue and that can be sanded back later. Um, yeah, so it, I fell out the hobby for a while. Got into writing music and got into doing my web comic and stuff for a few years and things like that. And then I came back to it, what, about four or five years ago now? Five or six years ago. Came back to it, started doing this channel. And I've got to tell you, I've got to tell you, for me to have come back now, in the last sort of five or six years, to this hobby, what a way to get exactly the perfect time to get into this hobby. 
because you know go back six or seven years there was none of this stuff you know there was always obviously the warhammer but the the amount of stuff there is now and the quality of stuff there is now compared to what there was even you know even 10 years ago i really don't know where that piece of plastic just went <laughs> it went somewhere it went into my crotch somewhere and it would be I'll find it. Unfortunately, I'll probably sit down quickly at some point and find it in a painful way. Um, yeah, to have come back now, it's almost perfect timing because there's so much choice. You know, I came back into the hobby at just the right time when Gumplu was kind of known in this part of the world and starting to get known. Uh, I came back just as Warhammer stuff games workshop got new management and became less asses and turned into real human beings um and you know i think this right now will be seen in the great in the future will be seen like a golden a golden age of games workshop because they've really transformed themselves but you know i came back at just the right time because go back 10 years before that you know when i just before i sort of dropped out of the hobby go back 10 or 15 years <clears throat> And if you weren't just a traditional model maker making tanks and planes, which was kind of all there was, a lot of it, the only things that were out of the ordinary were things like, I mean, I was making a lot of like Star Trek kits, Star Trek ships and stuff. Um, and there were some, you know, garage companies that did resin stuff, but a lot of the stuff here in the UK at the very least, ow, stabby. Um, you know, it was either you make railway stuff, you do traditional plane and Spitfires and old man kits, or you kind of do Star Wars. That's about it. Maybe very occasionally you'd see some kind of exotic foreign kit that you didn't understand at all, like a Gumpler or something, or a, a, a Macross Robotech kit came across your desk that you have no idea what it was, and you're like, wow, that's cool. But, you know, things like Mac A and like Machine and Krieger and... Yeah, a lot of the niche stuff, a lot, all the Bandai stuff didn't exist. So it's probably one of the reasons why I fell out of the hobby was I kind of got bored. You know, I grew up building Tamiya kits. I grew up building Ravel Star Trek stuff and AMT MPC Star Trek stuff and Star Wars kits, which all of which were terrible, by the way. All of which were truly goddamn awful and are to this day. I really wish somebody else would get a Star Trek license and make decent Star Trek kits. But... Um, yeah, but to come back now, I, I, I can only feel great happiness and joy for people that are just getting into the hobby now because there's so much variety available to so many more people that just wasn't there five, even just five years ago, especially in the UK, you know, where we, we, we're always last to find out these things, you know, we don't really know, there's no, there's no real Bandai presence in this part of the world. so it's only what we pick up through others there's so much choice and availability now with the internet and everything that it's a great time to get into this hobby it's just the best time to be getting into this hobby and i'm so glad that i fell back into it now and not like 10 years ago and this is why you know i was saying before about how i like to mix things up the reason I jump around and then stick with something for a while and then jump to something else is because I need to make sure I don't get bored. Because this is my passion. This is what I do for my job. This is my living. But also, um, I like to just, I don't know what the point I was going to make. Yeah, also, like, if I'd done this 10 years ago, YouTube would have been terrible. <laughs> it, was, it was terrible. Uh, I would have had less choice of kits and I probably would have got bored and had to go off and get a job because I would never have got this far. But having been doing this now... This time, this time, this place, all these kits I can make, and the, the amount of the, the fun I'm having with these and with the gumplers and other things, so much. This is why, you know, I, I really hope that I can make a go of this, that I have my Patreon and stuff, and that gives me my income. I really don't want to have to go off and give this up because I can't make a living doing it. I just have to go off and get an office job and do job. I want to make this work because this is just the best time and it's a dream. And it's always made nice to, you know, live the dream. No, it might not work. I might find myself in, you know, two or three years time 
having a job again and having to go and get a job somewhere. It's, that's the way it goes. That's the way it goes. But at least I can say I tried. But what a time right now. What a time. Anybody coming into this hobby right now? Because oh. even go back five or six years, half the products for weathering and painting just didn't exist. So I can only imagine what the next 10 years will bring. What it will be like in 10 years time from now. Can you imagine? I mean, just imagine. Where we'll be. Uh, what time are we on? It's half past five. I will need to go very shortly because we've got some stuff being delivered that I need to go and be ready for. So I'll just get this bit sanded back, get it stuck on, and I think we'll call it quits for today. Is there a seam line on that that I need to worry about? Yeah, little one. I'm going to use the knife for this because it's a tiny seam line. Now these are going to, there's lots of sanding marks on this. But you know what? It doesn't matter because because this is like the bit on the front of the truck. So it's going to be battered and scraped and scratched anyway. So it doesn't actually matter. Oops. Also, it's making a complete hash of my sanding sticks because it's ripping them to shreds. <laughs> Thanks for that. So that just needs to go on. Where does this go on? This goes on like there to see. Somehow. How does that attachificate like that? How does that even go on? What are you talking about, Willis? Okay, that's how it works. Cool. A little bit of glue in there. A little bit of glue, and we'll stick it on there like there to see. Squishy, squishy. Get some going down the side. Yes, yeah, so I'm looking forward to painting this at some point in the future because it's all going to be dirt and dust and grime and scratch and scraped. Orcs make their stuff out of junk and scrap they find lying around. They don't really understand why it works. It just works. It's my kind of engineering. I don't know why it works. I just hit it with a hammer and it just works. That's how I do things. I find it hard to believe that many years ago I had a little Mark II Fiesta and somehow, because nowadays I've got no ability to do any kind of engineering at all, I'm just useless. Somehow in the old days I managed to strip the engine down a bit, take out the crankshaft, the camshaft and everything in the engine, get it all out, get it all cleaned up, clean off the camshaft, get the, I don't know, I took the top off, took all the bits out, cleaned it, put it back together and it still worked. And that was going back about 25 years. I couldn't do that now, if I tried I wouldn't have a clue. Would not have a Scooby-Doo how to do that. It's weird, isn't it? You get older, you lose the ability to do a lot of things. Uh, where else did I cut off the sprue? I cut something else off. Where is it? What did I do? I had the barrel. Always oh, done. Right, so that's glued on. I think what we'll do, I need to go wait for deliveries now. So I'm going to call it there. Let's have a quick last look at the chat and a swig of coffee or tea. Uh -huh. uh, bit of a doo. Commissioner Gordon is alive! <laughs> Balaclava Bob, you're getting a sticker for that. You're getting a sticker for that. <laughs> Commissioner Gordon, is, that's the, you're getting a sticker. I've decided. Oh, comment of the week. Balaclava Bob, send me an email. Fox at modelmakingguru.com. It's at the bottom of the screen there. I will send you a sticker. There you go. You've won yourself a gooey sticker just by doing that comment. Commissioner Gordon's alive! <laughs> That's brilliant. Uh, Oswick says he went to an audience with Brian Blessed last year. He was awesomely funny. I think I've seen him at something live and he was awesome. Does he talk about punching a polar bear? Uh, in the first Batman live action movie back in the 1940s, the Batmobile was just uh, Bruce Wayne's limo and unmasked Alfred driving him to crimes. Yeah, he had like a, a normal sedan car. That front bumper could be a pretty good back scratcher, says Quano Man. It, it, I, I, the one thing I've learned, I've discovered, with uh, especially when I've been doing the Warhammer Conquest and making the Chaos Death Guard, things like Plague Walkers or whatever they're called, or the, the zombie dudes, 
your fingers end up covered in little painful dimples because you're constantly holding things and they're stabbing you. So Death Guard and the Pox Walkers, they're a nightmare. Trying to put them together, build them. Painting them's fine, but when you're trying to build Pox Walkers, and they've all got the horns sticking up and you're like, ah, 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 really hurts. The Death Guard really hurts. Uh, lol, cheers, chat will do, says Balaclava Bog. Fox equals Orc, says Ghost Lyle. <laughs> I'm no Orc. Although I do paint everything red. Dad's an orc because he paints everything red. And red makes everything go faster. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so what we're going to do, I think we'll call it there. I say I've got to go and wait for some deliveries. I'll get this built up tonight and I'll go on my shelf ready. Next week, uh, we will either, either uh, crack on with one of my other vehicles that I need to start painting. So we've got the Hydra. I've got a Lehman Rust that I haven't primed yet. So I need to, I need to magnetise that. So I might get some of that during the week. Uh, or we'll crack on with one of those. Or my Sentinel, perhaps. We'll crack on with... Or, what I might do, if I get a chance to do any prep work, I might do Chris's Warhamster drawing live on the telly next week. If, if I get... I might not get time to do any prep work. I've got to kind of prep it and get it all line drawn, and we'll do the drawing and the painting. But I don't know yet. We'll see. It might not happen. So I assume it's going to be buildy-buildy, but you never know. Um, but, uh, what else? Yes. Don't forget, of course, uh, later on tonight, 8 p.m., uh, on Chris's channel, Gross Models, of course, we have the uh, late show sort of Warhammer, Warhamster Sunday that he's doing. He's working on his orc knobs or his orc truck thing. Boom truck, boom mega truck, blaster boom truck, truck thing. But of course, before that, at 7 o'clock, he's um, doing, is it 7 o'clock, Chris? He's doing his, go to his channel because he's got his video for the big tanks as well. So that's there as well. Go and check that out. Uh, Chris, Ted and I will be doing the E-Models live stream, not on Monday because it's bank holiday. So we're not going to be doing it this week. As I started saying that, I realised we won't go on. Okay, so we always see us on Monday night. I'm going to crack on now, once this is done tonight. Uh, I am now underway with the uh, Master Grade Sazabi. Uh, I'm still in the process of taking all the bits off the sprue. There's lots and lots of denubbing to do and clean up. So I don't know if I'm going to get to filming anything or when I'll get to filming it to the build part. It will be a Patreon exclusive series, so do keep that in mind. I will do little build diaries for everybody else who's not on Patreon, not a Patreon supporter, but the full episodes will be Patreon exclusive. So if you want to make sure you want to watch them, make sure to go and help me out on Patreon. On that note, if you want to help this channel out, there's a few ways you can. First of all, do remember to like and subscribe if you're not already subscribed and hit the notification bell so you can see my videos. If you want to help this channel out massively, as I explained, this is what I do for a living. This is my job. Uh, and I depend 100% on my patrons to keep the lights on, keep me food on my table. I, that, that's my income. So if you'd like to help me out and guarantee that I continue to do stuff, do pop along to my channel, patreon.com forward slash model making guru, and see if you'd like to help out. Any, every little helps. Uh, from a dollar upwards, you can do however much or a little you want. Uh, it just means I can keep the lights on, I can keep doing this, and I keep making content for you guys. It puts food on my table. Uh, you can, of course, also, if you don't want to do that, you can, of course, if you'd like to, uh, take a look at the description below this video. There is a link to, first of all, my merchandise shawl, which is only small at the minute. There's a few t-shirts and hoodies in there. Go and check it out. Ignore the three pictures of hoodies at the bottom because there's only there's only three there. It should have nine. There's nine things in store. There is more stuff coming. So go and check out the link in the video description. And there's also my Amazon store. If you need to pick up some model making stuff and you're in the UK, um, then you can go to my Amazon store. There's a load of tools and brushes and all kinds of bits of stuff on there you'll find useful. Go and check it out. If you need to pick up stuff from Amazon, go through my store first. If it's on there, get it through that link because that helps me out and gives me a little bit of income. Just a little tiny bit. And if there's something on there you want to pick up and it's not in my store, give me a shout. It'd take me two minutes to add it. But other than that, I just want to say thank you very much for watching. Do take care of yourselves. Go and enjoy your dinner if you're in the UK. Go and have your dinner. I'm going to go for an enormous week because I'm bursting now. Uh, but I shall see you all throughout the course of the week. I will be posting up another Warhammer Conquest video as well. That's due to go up in the next few days. And I'll see if I can get the first Sazabi video out sometime this week. But if not, I shall see you shortly anyway. But take care of yourselves. Thank you very much for watching. Go make something awesome, as always. Go be awesome. And until next time, adios amoebas. <laughs>